the spoon for it. All right, here we are again. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Ringside Society presents another phenomenal episode of the Wrestling Fans Podcast. In our first corner, we have the great. Greatest thing on God's green earth. No, we're not talking money. Mary Spinach. He's the tracker dart of Ringside Society and Delaware's greatest American hero. It takes two to make a thing go right. He is Rob Bass, and you are not. In the second corner, we have the monarch of Mardi Gras, the Baroness of Bourbon Street. Whenever she's not hosting Ringside Society, she's on crazy misadventures, such as shopping for DeLoreans, going back to 1885 for churned butter, and picking fights with people all the while dressed up as one of the road warriors. And she is a member of the Knight family, Louisiana's own Kathy Knight. And the third corner we have that ocean crossing, straight up bossing, flight catching, shot glass snatching, always on the go, catch him if you can, said his name in Guyana, now they love him in Japan. No cap, the worldwide star boy, Remy Blue. And we have a special guest tonight. A special guest who I, 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 this seems like a dream right now. I, hey, I could probably pinch myself. I can't believe it, but she's here right now. Rob Bass has goosebumps. <laughs> Kathy can't stop smiling from ear to ear. She is a former Shimmer champion, owner of Bellatrix, and a member of the famous and one of the most brutal families in wrestling, the Knight family, everybody, welcome to the show, <laughs> sweet Soraya Knight. <laughs> wow, I should, I should take you around with me to introduce me everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to hire you just to kind of talk me into places, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> so how are you doing, guys? Yeah, you're... We're we're pretty good. We're pretty good. Um, good. You know, Kathy was like, Kathy was so excited when you were actually coming on the show. Rob was excited. I was excited too. I was like, wow, a, a legend we, we're having on our show. This is crazy. Like, <laughs> what do I do? What do I say? And I mean, I've had we've had legends on here before, but it's like for some reason it was like, what do I do? What do I say? Hmm. You know, Rob was like, I'm watching so many matches. You know, Kathy was figuring out what shirt she, she was supposed to put on. So, yeah. Oh, that's incredible. We that's, very, no, uh, that's, re that's really cool. That's um, <laughs> not bad for a little girl from Council House in, in Norwich. <laughs> that's really cool. That's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite humbled by that. <laughs> I got to say, Soraya, you are, so, is it Soraya or Soraya? I don't want to get your name. I don't want to mispronounce your name. Um, no, it's Soraya. I got to. Very I got to. You, on, but yeah. you are an. You are an. You are. You are an incredible wrestler. I've seen a couple of your matches. Woof! You are. Oh man! <laughs> I, I got to say, I was like, "Geez, the hurt you put on these people." Oh man! I, oh, I, I, but, I well, to be honest, in in thirty one years, I can say. Um, there's been, I accident, I mean, accident, obviously I wouldn't do anything on purpose, but um, there was a, 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 a two broken collarbones, but that was down to their landing. <laughs> and one of the girls, um, I didn't even know, and she she went all the way to the end of the match and she said her, her shoulder felt a bit sore. Um, it was just on a landing on one of the things that she'd done. And um, it, she had a, a, a very slight uh, break in the collarbone. So there's, in 31 years of wrestling, it's been two collarbones and one eardrum. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not proud of that, but I still think that's a hell of a record for 31 years in the job. Wow. Yeah. To say, to say I'm you, super violent. You've definitely done great. <laughs> <laughs> you've definitely done great. You've actually, and, and, then, and, and you're, also, you're also a mother of three, um, three incredible children. Um, Paige, of course, you know, being Kathy's favorite wrestler in WWE. Um, I have to say, I, I don't know if anybody's ever, they probably told your daughter this, but Soraya, your daughter, Paige, 
in my opinion, was like the leader of you know the women's of, uh, like the women's revolution in WWE. Oh, People say changed. oh, it was the Bella Twins, yeah. and it was. No. But I, I always tell no. people there's only two to me. There's two people that come to mind when it comes to women's revolution, and that was Paige, and there was another girl. I don't know if you ever met her in person, AJ Lee, because they changed yeah. the way how you know women were looked at at that time. Yeah, uh, when um, I saw Paige, to be I was, fair, yeah, I mean, like, uh, sorry, let me start. I have got, I've got, I've actually got six children. Um, there's. All of them oh. at one stage or another has been in the wrestling business. Um, you'll probably know of the hooligans and Paige, um, but I have another two sons and another daughter. Um, and all of them have been involved in the wrestling business, um, but they've done other things as well. Um, so, yeah, there's, uh, there's, quite, there's quite a few of us. <laughs> obviously, I've got grandsons and, and stuff in the business as well now. I've got um, uh, Ricky Knight Jr., RKJ, and, um, and Pat, PJK. They, those are the two next up and comers. And then obviously I've got my great grandchildren and some smaller grandchildren that are in the kids club. So um, there's quite a lot of us, but uh, where uh, Paige is concerned, um, I think her match with uh, Emma at arrival, at arrival was to me, was, was to the me, one that actually, the one that actually cemented the way that cemented the way oh, that, hang on, I'm getting feedback. Oh, hang on, I'm getting feedback. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, yeah, that um, actually cemented that, for that me the, uh, for the change the, uh, in the change. female wrestling. Um, I think I think uh, Triple H saw something in that match because he gave them time. He made them, he allowed them um, to do to have a little bit of a say so in what they did. Um, and I think that nothing can ever take away from Tennille Dashwood and and my daughter. Um, they put on a, a match that changed the face of female wrestling as we know it. Um, when it was FCW days, everyone knew about her, but they tried so many times to, to do different gimmicks with her and the Ravenhead Lady and, you know, the Girl in the Shadows with Seth Rollins and all this sort of stuff that um, once they allowed her to be herself and um, allowed her input, um, once, once they allowed her to do that, that's when everything changed. That's when the format changed. That's when um, all the girls that had been fighting so hard, you know, because you've got a member, you, you can go before Elantra Blaze. You can go. You you can go right back in time, and every woman before Paige has made one step towards what the goal is right now. But it was my daughter, I believe, um, that stopped the girls having to try so hard to fit in. She opened the door for the girls to be accepted in their own way and in their own right. And I don't think before that match, I don't think that was an option. I still think the girls were classed as a bathroom break. Um, but that, that match to me, her and Emma arrival was the match, I think, the cemented uh, female wrestling as we know it right now. I think that was the starting point. Yeah, that was definitely, and that was definitely a great starting point as well. I, I have always been a huge um, women's wrestling fan, um, and I've always believed that, you know, the, the well, I, I don't really, the, first off, I don't really, and I'm probably going to get cancelled for this. I never really cared for the Divas era because I believe that there could have been more done there. Uh, I was glad to see it happening, you know, and, and, and going in that direction and so on. And, and I, the way I look at things, at how things have actually evolved to the way, it is, the way they are now, the way they are now, I'm like, yes, yes, this is, now, this is, what, this is what I'm talking about. You know, letting the women do their thing, not putting them in like pillow and, what was it, pillow and blankets matches or whatever, and, and well, all these if you bra, think about it, matches. ten years ago, ten years ago, yeah. who would have thought who females thought would females uh, would headline WrestleMania? Uh, WrestleMania. True, true. Unheard of. Unheard of. Unheard of. Unheard of. For the last WrestleMania, the last WrestleMania and the WrestleMania and before, the WrestleMania before there, was a, there was a female. female there was the girls. They, they, the they, girls. they, uh, they, they headline. Uh, headline. I'm getting terrible okay. feedback. Right, let's try it that way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do believe that the, the the girls nowadays. I mean, look at them all. Um, you know, look at Bianca Belair. Uh, I mean, if she, if if there wasn't the platform that that I mean, I I mean, I'm not saying it was all my daughter, but I think my daughter was was the one that um, set the playing field on a level. Peggin, um, she brought something into the the business that was needed desperately. Um, you know, she was different. She was she was real. She she was the working class girl. She. You know, I mean, there was, there's no mistake that a movie was made about her progression 
um, because she was so different. She was like uh, that that breath of fresh air, that that break from um, from what what they had already. I mean, you could tell the girls were bikini models or they were sports models or something. I mean, look at Natty. Natty has been wrestling all her life, and the the girl now is classed as an icon in female wrestling. But ten years ago, she was still Natty. She was still under under the um, the cloak of her family. Whereas now she stands alone. She's the best knight that's ever come out, really, I believe. The technical ability and everything, the one that holds the pedestal in the, in the Hart family has got to be Natty. Um, you know, it's. I think Natty now is starting to get what she deserves. But I do believe it goes back seven, eight years ago when, when my daughter managed to, to change the way um, at the fate of female wrestlers all around the world. Yeah. So normally what we know, what I normally do is I, I, I always go back in time and I ask every guest, um, every guest this, but what was the match or main event that made you become, you know, a fan of professional wrestling? Was it prior to like, what did, did, were, were you, did you know, did you like get into it prior to meeting like um, Ricky Knight or was it like, when you met him, like you started paying, like you, you saw it, like your first match, or yeah, yeah. You know? um, um, I never really, I never really was interested in was wrestling. Interested I didn't wrestling. really I didn't know it was, really um, it was, um, it was out there. It was, it was out there. It was a profession. Um, uh, I remember when I was little, and I was brought up in Penzance down in Cornwall, which is like the bottom end of, of the UK. And um, I remember seeing Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks at my local rugby club, and. You know, everybody knew who they, those guys were. They were household names. Um, they were on, you know, regular TV, on terrestrial TV all the time. So um, even as a child growing up, I knew who they were and I knew they were wrestlers. I just didn't really, really take wrestling and, and, and approach it. I never was really a fan. Um, and then I met my husband um, and his profession was a wrestler. And then that was it. It was like, well... Uh, he's on the road a lot. I don't want to be on my own home here. So um, in those days, you weren't allowed to take dead wood. You weren't allowed on the road unless you were a wrestler or had something to do with the business um, because you weren't going to take up a seat for a worker. So for me to be with my husband, I either had to join him or I don't think our relationship would have lasted uh, because he was on the road 300 days a year. So... In very very early on in mine and my husband's relationship, I decided that I was going to do what it took to be by his side. Um, so they taught me how to manage, and then they taught me. You know, I I enjoyed the buzz. Um, you know, I learned how to fight. Uh, I was a I was a, a street kid. I I lived on the street, so I wasn't one of these um, bullshit in your face. You know, I survived. That's what I did. I I was like a little mouse. I I survived, but. Um, it was the early days of manager essence for my husband and learning the business that way and, and understanding the 360. Um, that's what gave me the buzz. And I enjoyed the the um, the violence of it and the storytelling of it and the pantomime of it, but also the physical exertion. Um, and that's when the, the husband decided, well, I'll, I'll teach her how to wrestle too, um, you know, because it's another string to the bow so that every time he got booked somewhere. If they didn't want the manageress, then I wasn't dead wood. I could be classed as a wrestler. So it was a progression that way. Um, and I learned to love the business uh, after I saw um, Sensational Sherry. And uh, I remember, like, I can't remember which match it was. Um, I remember she, she came out and she had this big dress and it was an off the shoulder with a very high uh, ruffle onto it. And she had all the face paint on and what a bitch. What an <laughs> absolute bitch. But could she turn it on in that ring? And she was never caught. And, you know, she transitioned manager, wrestler, same as I did. Um, you know, so I was just enthralled by Sherry. Um, to me, she was like, like, what is this woman? Like, Jesus Christ, I, I'd love to have a shoot with her. I, I bet she could go. And, and she kind of sparked, you know, the way she never got caught and the way she adapted. And she was a she wasn't just a pretty girl on the side of the apron. She was part of that match. Just like my husband made me when I was manageressing. Um, I wasn't someone that just stayed on the out. I was, I was a weapon to be used within. And Sherry was the same. 
And then um, I saw Luna Fasham. And this is all on the same show. And I'm like, the fuck are these women? Like, Jesus Christ, this, this woman is insane. Like, her voice is just nuts. And, and her presence is just crazy. And then to top it off, out comes Miss Elizabeth of Matcha Man. Miss Demure, sweet, wonderful, beautiful, um, a, amazing girl that was an, epit an, a, an epitome of manager essay. The, the pretty girl on the sideline, little cheerleader, you know. And my husband turned around and said to me, he goes, that's what I want you to be. And he's going, you've got no fun chance, mate. There's no way I could be a Miss Elizabeth because I ain't that sort of girl. And she was like, he was like, no, I want you to be a bit of Elizabeth, a bit of Sherry, and a bit of Luna. And that's what I want you to be. I want you to be demure and ladylike when you come out the ring. But as soon as that referee is turned, I want you to turn into the biggest bitch that ever walked this earth. And I want you to be violent but never get caught. So my character developed from those three amazing women. And uh, I only got to meet one of them and wrestle one of them, which you know I'll always be grateful for. But I was really gutted that I didn't get to see the other two. Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny that you actually mentioned those because Kathy's kind of like the same way too. Like whenever she's, uh, I tell Kathy to do one thing, she actually goes and does her own thing. And then when I say, why did you do that? And then she's like, eh, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. You know, do whatever you want to do. I was just asking, you know, and, and whatnot. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your daughter over there, your, your, yeah, your, your other daughter over there. Yeah, she's uh we're kind of like Vince and Steve Austin, you know, like I say, I say one thing and then she actually like says, no, I don't know, I'm not, right, okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> not my See, quiet, hard-mannered Kathy. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, I, Rob, I can get away with it, but Kathy, uh-uh, no, she's, 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 no, not there. With that baby face, that what baby can you get is get anything, get anything. Anything you want. Anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you end up teaming with, um, you end up be being um, with uh, Jimmy Ocean and your husband, Ricky Knight. And, you know, you end up going to, like, Shimmer. What was it like wrestling for Shimmer? Kind of um, from my, from my like, um, impressions that Shimmer is, like, one of the places, like, one of the creme de la creme, like female promotions, you should wrestle in in America. And to me, like the, the, the another impression I get is that it's a very highly competitive. Um, it, how do I put it? I, I guess I guess a highly competitive um, area. But what was it like for you? Um, to be honest, um, when, I came, honest over, when um, I came over, um, I just, I just, I, I, I just had a, a knee operation. Had a, a knee operation. Um, I'd been um, on against cheerleaders in Mr. Open England, England, and, and kind of got a little bit dicey little between, bit between us between on the real. Us, on the real. Um, um, and when I got I, when I got asked to come over to Shimmer, it was more like a. Um, I thought that I was an add-on to my daughter. Uh, to be fair, uh, a guy called Stu Allen had put our tapes into Dave Prezak, and. Um, he turned around and, and like, Dave loved uh, Paige, but he loved my promos. So he just thought Mother Daughter hadn't been done before. Um, you know, that, that's a, 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 an asset, really. Um, so I remember when I went over there, uh, nobody had actually seen my sort of stuff before. Um, you know, there was, a, a, like, the American indie circuit at the time. They'd, they tried so hard to get away from the old school way that nobody was doing the old school way anymore. Nobody was actually going out there and, and trying to cause riots and, um, you know, like orchestrating the crowd, um, playing with emotions. Uh, nobody, nobody was actually doing the tempoing of the crowd where the crowd love you, they hate you. And my, um, my gimmick was getting more and more and more violent um, and psychotic. Um, unpredictable. Uh, I remember the first time I was at Shimmer, we had one policeman. I remember the last time I worked at Shimmer, we had Shimmer, we had six. Um, so it's to me going out on the biggest stage on the independent circuit for female wrestling because that's what Shimmer is. It is the hotbed of the best talent from around the world. Uh, wh whatever anyone says about Dave Prezak, Alison Danger, and the people that work behind the scenes at Shimmer, they've got a great eye for talent. 
and they are watching uh, like every girl in the world is being watched by shimmer um and dave will say to you send your stuff in um and he'll check it but you've got to remember every girl in the world because if they can't get to the, the the big leagues they want to work for shimmer um so like most of the names most of the girls that are working in wwe came out of that promotion um the shimmer doesn't create stars but it gives you the foundation for to be seen and 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 usually girls go on to big things from shimmer that's that's um that's the platform you have to get to to be noticed by the big leagues and Three quarters of, of Shimmer's talent have gone on to become huge, huge megastars in the, in the female wrestling world. Um, to be classed as good enough um, was, was, it was something that I was quite taken aback by. Um, but I think the biggest thing to me was when uh, we'd done the four matches with, I'd done four matches with Raya for her last show. And, um, We'd done the, the big fight. We'd done um, different matches. I'd interfered. But she was on with Melissa. Um, I'd uh, gone out there and we'd created this drama so that the last match, it was going to be me and her, um, you know, in, in a fight. And um, I, said to, uh, I said to the guys after the match and everyone to say bye to Raya. Uh, I said to Dave Prezak the day that I was going to the airport and uh, I said, well, thank you. Thank you for giving this old girl a platform. Um, it's been an honor to wrestle for you and and I've loved every minute of it. And I cuddled Alice in danger. In no way, shape, or form did I ever think that I was going to come back under my own steam because I thought that they that I was an add-on to Raya. And once Raya had gone to WWE, who would want uh, you know, an older wrestler? Well then when I get the the call back from Dave, and I, I remember walking in that day without my daughter, which was very strange, and um Alison pulled me aside and she said, uh, uh Jules we, we 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 need to talk to you and it's like well what's that she goes we're going to put you in a in a storyline with uh cheerleader Melissa I went oh, okay no worries she went yeah yeah she says so uh we'll do that we'll do the four matches you're going to be involved in in all the storylines within our matches or whatever she says and what we want to do is build up for you, you and her at the end for the title I've gone yeah no worries all right Ali no no worries what, whatever you want to do so I've gone to walk off and she went, Julie, you didn't hear what I said, did you? I went, yeah, you want me to work, Julie and Melissa, um, at, the, at the end. Um, you want to build up for, for, um, and you want me to do the, the match, the, the final match on, on tape in four. And she went, Julie, you still don't get it, do you? And I've just looked and I go, what, Alison? I don't get what you're saying. She went, we're sticking the belt on you. Well. You can imagine my arsehole fell out, um, you know, to be given that title, uh, which is to me the, the biggest independent female title in the world. Um, and to be told that the, the first taping after my daughter has gone to WWE, I've been brought back and they're telling me I'm going to be in storyline with one of the founding members of Shimmer, the girl that's held the title long, the actual flagship character of Shimmer. And not only that, they want me to go over on her. And this is just after we had all the, the, the stuff going on with my knee and what happened there. And then they wanted me to take her out on a knee submission. <laughs> I'm like, what is my life? What is this shit? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I remember my insides just wobbling. And, and I just uh, I just like, thank you. Thank you for the honor. Thank you for trusting me. Um, I won't let you down. And I remember going in the bathroom and crying, literally bawling my eyes out because I couldn't believe that, that anybody would want to, to stick belts on me at my age. Um, so then when I come out, because none of the girls, none of the girls are allowed to know. Um, they know when you go over. So it's kept very, very secret. Title changes. Nobody knows the title changes in Shimmer until it physically happens. So I remember, and to me, it will always be one of the biggest pops of my career. Um, Everybody knew the background story with me and Melissa um, when the, the match was on and the, the, the shit was kind of hitting the fan and it was getting more and more and more violent. And it was starting, you could see a niggle coming in and you could see um, the interchanges were getting heavier and that the, uh, the working was getting crazier. And then I remember when I took her out and I stuck her in just in a basic single leg Boston and I hyped her up up onto her onto her throat and um i've hyped i've done a high 
and I've held on to that top rope, knowing full well that the referee's not going to see that, knowing full well that she's going to submit to that, and knowing full well that any minute now, the crowd is going to have a new champion. And guess what? It's going to be fucking me. <laughs> so I'm waiting all in my head. I've got all of this stuff going on in my head, going, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. How are they going to react? How are they going to... And I'm holding, and she's struggling, and she's making me work for it. And and then um, when she tapped and the bell went, deathly silence. Everybody in that building was stunned. They, you could have heard a pin drop. And in my head, I went, yeah, motherfuckers. Didn't expect that one, did you? <laughs> and I'm inside, I'm like buzzing my tits off because, you know, you get the heat and you get the craziness and you get the roaring, but people don't realize that the biggest thrill and the biggest buzz in wrestling is when you do something the crowd doesn't expect and it's the shock and every single room there, there must have been 350 300 350 people in that room and not one person said a word and i remember holding the bell and then lifting it up and then the crowd just rioted but it was about about 30 40 seconds of absolute deathly pin drop silence and I was just, I, in, the, in my head, I was thinking, like, this has got to be the biggest buzz of my whole career. I have shocked everybody in this room. Nobody expected it. And I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And, and I held it. I think I held it for about 10 months, 10, 10, 11 months, I think I held it for. But even now, I, I get goosebumps just thinking, I get the old lump in the throat because um, I managed to do things that a lot of people don't get chance, male or female, don't get chance to do in this business which is shock the shit out of people. And I did. And that will always be one of my biggest moments in my career is uh, shutting people the fuck up. <laughs> but the toughness, you know, the toughness you exude in the ring, I'm surprised that, and it still baffles me, but I'm surprised Dolby, because Dolby has been known to hire people like you have guys like Steve Carino, you have um, I think his name is Matt Bloom, aka A Train, aka Prince Albert of yeah. Attitude Era fame, yeah. and you have um, what's her name again? Ah, uh, she's she trains the, the women over there. It will be Sarah Delray. Uh, I forgot, Sarah I Delray. Sarah Delray. Yeah, I'm surprised they have not hired you. They didn't hire you to like be a trainer over there too, to to like you know <laughs> show them how to be tough in the ring and so on. Because I mean. Well, you go in. Oh. <laughs> I can only I imagine what you would do to those that. girls in that <laughs> ring. <laughs> uh, uh, the thing is with me is I'm quite vocal. Um, there's no filter. And um, I know how to act in the right circumstance. But if anybody gets in my face and I have two or three people jamming at me and all telling me different shit and all rearing up and blaming me for shit I ain't done, I'm going to kick off. I've, there's, you know, there's no restraint. There's no... You know, there's there's no holding me back. And and I just think, you know, sometimes in some places your face fits and sometimes it just doesn't. And I don't think, I mean, they, they got my daughter when she was young enough to be, be, be molded. Um, I just don't think I've got what they're looking for. Um, I mean, I'm known as a as a as a hardcore wrestler, as a vicious wrestler, as a, you know, as a, a bit of a, a bit handy. Um, but my love is text submission. Um, and I teach, when I teach all around the world, I teach tech submission wrestling. I don't teach the violence, but I teach people how to look after themselves in and out the rings. So everything I teach can be done on the street. So, you know, you can take, you, I, I've had people write to me and say, you know, that move you taught me, it saved my fucking life. And to me, that knowledge is better than, than anything. And, um, you know, the big leagues just don't want it. They, they don't want someone going in there with a uh, rock in the boat. They don't want, they don't want someone this way they think can't be controlled. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll do what I'm told and I'll, I'll follow a um, anything that anyone tells me to do. But you start bitching at me and you start getting in my face and start saying shit that's not true. I will stand up for myself and not only me, my family are behind me as well. And I think as much as that is a wonderful thing to have such a close knit family and such a barrage of rage behind you as a backing force, it also hinders. You know, I, I do honestly think that, that sometimes it does keep you back because people are fearful. They really are. Speaking of family, um, fighting with my family, one of the one of my favorite, you know, 
wrestling, um, I guess you could say biopic slash movies that, that, I've, that I've seen. Um, I got to say, um, I was very happy. With, with, I was very glad with the way, you know, that it showed Paige's journey. I felt also incredibly bad for, like, you know, her brother that he wasn't picked. And I was like, I understand that's how business is. But then I was like, okay, so it's been years. Can't they at least hire the guy? I mean, give the guy. I mean, you got NXT UK. I mean, you know. Well, how, how, would, it feel, right? how, how would it feel, right? Okay, so you know, okay. they've done a story. They've done, they've done story. ways, uh, they've done you know, ways, they've done her uh, wise you know, They've done her wise to start um, um, And they've got her brother that they've turned down countless they've times. Got her brother that they've um, down. So to me um, and so, to everybody else in the whole world, the best, the best ending to that story is for Zach to be signed. Do you know what I mean? You know that that to me is the perfect ending, so that Zach has a story too. Rather than showing the yin and the yang, why not have two success stories? Um, I mean, my son has poured himself into um, you know a different side. He's got a gift. Zach is very gifted uh, with disabled people, uh, whether it's mental, physical, um, you know, any any sort of trauma that um, a, a person has suffered, for some reason, my son can um, give them a confidence that they don't get anywhere else. And they and he can make them do stuff that they never thought that they could. I mean, he taught a blind wrestler to wrestle for real. For real. Um, we had Rosie Jones, which is a really famous uh, cerebral palsy comic uh, comedian over here. And we've just done a, sh a show that's just aired on British TV over here. She's got cerebral palsy. Uh, him and uh, Zach and Roy taught her how to wrestle enough to get through a match with another three of our girls. Um, you know, we've got autistic Asperger's. We've got uh, so many different um, mental uh, health and, you know, physical uh, health uh, people here that Zach has now kind of gone into that. And he was going to be, he was going up for an award for his services to um, society, the disabled and the underdog. Um, he's been put up for the Prince's Trust Award. He's got put up for um, the um, uh, the Mental Health Award. There's so many awards that Zach's been put up with. The WWE are completely aware of this because they saw the, the, the TV series Step Into the Ring. They saw it. They know that Zach is a carer for many of the kids that were in the Step Into the Ring. Um, they know everything that Zach is doing and they're still now saying to him um, you know, when, when it opens up, we want you in for trials. We want to do this. We want to do that. So Zach is at present under the WWE. He is going to have a trial, another one. So this would be trial number four. What I'm worried about, um, which is a huge bother to me, is unless they wrap up this story, which is the one that everybody wants, which is Zach getting his shot too um, and being a WWE, it's a WWE superstar like he has done since the day he was born. Unless they wrap that story up, please don't break my son's heart again. Because it's not them that picks up the pieces. It's me and my family. You know, so don't keep putting them on promised land with these trials. And then at the end of it, turn around and say that your face don't fit. That you're not a star. That you haven't got what it takes. Don't give them a trial. So I know that um, we've got, there's trials coming up at the end of the year. And I know that he is going to be one of the components of the trial. Um, and the family are all here at this moment in time with um, safety nets to make sure that Zach, um, if he is turned down again, which will be the last time, um, that he has a safety net around him. Um, but it'll be a bigger one this time because all the mental health organizations, um, the societies that deal with Asperger's and autism, the, um, the Cerebral Palsy Association, all of those people that Zach now is a major part of and a spokesperson for, because he talks for the, the, kid, the children, uh, not for those looking after them. He talks for, the, for the, the person themselves. If he doesn't get his shot this time, then the world is going to be back in sack. It's not just the family that's going to be picking up the pieces. It will be, it will be the world. Um, and it will be the underdogs, the misfit. You know, as Raya calls us, um, you know, uh, when she done her speech, it's the, the forgotten, the, the, the weirdos, the, the freaks, the geeks, everything like that. We are a force to be reckoned with. Us freaks, us geeks, us, us overlooked because we're not perfect, because we don't look the same or we don't act the same or we haven't got the same mentality or we've got a, a real um, 
like a, a, a visual ailment. Well, guess what? We're better than you. And I'll tell you why we're better than you. It's because we live with the shit every day and we know how to cope with it. You guys get it on a silver platter with a silver spoon. But us guys, us freaks and us geeks and us, us forgotten, we're the survivors and we're the people that will make it. And that's what my son Zach stands for and that's what my daughter stands for and that's what my family stands for. So I just hope to God that this time when they put him up for trial, that they complete his story. Because if he do, if they don't do it, I'm pretty sure there'll be someone out there that will. So, you know, this will be the, the final chapter. Believe me. Now you know why I'm not a trainer. Now you know why I'm not a trainer. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, I'm honest. I'm really, truly hoping that he actually gets it this time. Um, well, I want the world to know that he's going up for trials again. I want the world to know because it's usually secret. Well, I want everyone to know that he's going up because it's usually secret. I want the world to be behind him. That he's going up for trials. I want the world to be behind him. I just have one more question before I turn it over to Kathy. I know Kathy's going to ask you a bunch of stuff about you know Bellatrix and all that stuff and so on. Uh huh. Um, there's another famous rest well, uh, another famous yet small wrestling family in England. And I don't know if, I, and I, my question is, have you ever ran into the Billingtons, the family of the Dynamite King? Yes. I know he has like two son, not two, yes. two nephews, Mark and Tom over there. Yeah. Have you guys yeah. ever had any matches? Like have, yeah. you, have your sons have any matches with them or have it, has it been like just like a high and by no. situation? My, no. my husband my, has wrestled my, uh, Tommy. Uh, when Tommy Billington was over here, uh, my husband has, has wrestled him. I mean, my husband has wrestled most of the greats out there. All, all the people that are hierarchy in WWE has been on, in with a match with, with my husband. Um, from, you know, Finley, uh, Stephen Regal, Bobby Brookside, all of them. Johnny Moss has been on with the family. So, you know, like all of them at one stage or another has been on, on with them. But uh, my husband used to wrestle Tommy quite a lot. Um, as for the boys, they're kind of up north. Um, and as they were um, cutting their teeth, they were, um, you know, they, they've been quite, quite enclosed up there. Um, and they're only just now starting to step out into, into the wild blue yonder. Um, and then COVID hit, hit. So I'm pretty sure that, that my husband will uh, bring the boys in um, as a testament to their, to their uncle. Because uh, my husband had so many matches with Tommy um, and, and Davey. Uh, so um, I'm pretty sure that, that my husband will, will do something with, with uh, Tommy's nephews. But um, it's you know it's what is one of my one of my things that my husband has wrestled the greats and the greats still remember him. Um, you know I've I've been I was out there with uh, Fuji Amada over in uh, in America and um, I remember it was at WrestleCon and I had done a, a, a cage match with cheerleader Melissa and it was the first female cage match at WrestleCon ever. So you know we'd we'd uh, we'd created a you know we'd started something very very crazy. And I remember at the end of the match, and um, uh, uh, Liger had, had, had moved in, had, had walked in. And I thought, well, I remember when he came over to England, because obviously I've been in the job a long time. And um, I thought, well, I'll wait till everyone is finished fussing around him. And then Steve Regal went over and started speaking to him. And I thought, well, I'm not going to interfere there because that's just being rude. You know, irrelevant of my stature in the business. You don't interfere when two greats are talking. Um, so I remember... Uh, when everyone had left him and I just went over to him and I go, look, I'm so sorry. And I don't mean to interrupt. Um, I, I, you probably won't remember me, but I do remember you. And you used to wrestle my husband a lot back in the day when you used to come over to England. He went, Ricky Knight, give him my regards. And I marked out big time, marked out big time to think that, that that man knew my husband by name and not only knew him, but completely turned around and told me to send him a message to say like, like, uh, Ricky Knight, I, I, I loved him. I, and I'm like, <laughs> all the people you've wrestled all the way around the world and you even you remember my husband from 20-odd years ago. What the actual? Um, so, yeah, I did kind of mark out a little bit and <laughs> walk off with a mobile phone and, and ring my husband going, you'll never guess who says hello to you. So, yeah, I did kind of mark out a little bit. But, um, yeah, I am very proud of my husband's career and the people he's wrestled. You know, he's... Uh, He's, he's overlooked a lot, but he was ahead of his time, I think.
Awesome. That sounds, uh, that's, that's a really cool, um, that's a really cool encounter right there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kathy right now. I know Kathy has a bunch of questions. She's like chopping it a bit. So Kathy, go ahead. The floor is yours. <laughs> All right. Thanks for me. All right. Thanks. Hey, Mama Knight. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. How are you doing, gal? Just have to say, I greatly appreciate that you said yes to come on the show. Uh, super it's exciting. you. Do you know how many <laughs> people I have turned down? I know. That's what I you have... said. And I'm like, I'm, now, right. I'm working out. I'm working out now. I'm like. You had all these podcasts to come on, and you come on mine. I'm like, I'm like nobody. Well, thank you. I'm going to name drop. I'm going to totally name drop because um, Deuce, Medusa wanted me to do one with her, and wow. um, uh, Sassy Stephanie, she wanted me to do do one, and uh, Vicky Guerrero wrote to me. And she goes like, Hey, girl, you know, would you come on my podcast? And then, um, oh God, oh, the, the, the list is endless. And I've gone, yeah, 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 definitely. You just, <laughs> just shoot me a shoot me a message and, and I'm game girl and you know, everything everything is good. Everything is good. And <laughs> me, I'm just terrible. I just didn't really follow up. And then Kathy out of the blue goes, Mama Knight, we'd like you on the podcast. Would you do it? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I I got I gotta do it for her. Fuck. I mean, I'm not saying I I'm, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it for anybody else because I absolutely will. But this is my first one in over a year, so yeah, um, yeah. It's because it's you, Kathy. Well, I'm honored. Like, I want to cry right now because that's that's crazy. Like, Vicky Guerrero, you know, Medusa. I remember you doing one. You did one for Lillian Garcia, and I think that's yeah. That's she the wants last, another one. That's she the last podcast. One. Yeah, that's the last one I've heard you on. So, like, I am yeah. Like, over the moon that you said yes and we're doing this now like i'm gonna have to pinch myself like is this real <laughs> uh well you, you come on my twitch every now and again and it's like yeah. oh it's Cassie. <laughs> i'm gonna have to do it between her and my daughter my god <laughs> well i am your adopted daughter now so i mean yeah yes i can see you've got my name now so yeah you, yeah, you are part they... of the clan they knighted me and all this on on ringside society it went through this whole thing it was pretty funny but yeah so i'm part of the family now because they're like you need a last name and i was like well you know be night yep has to be night so well i've actually go. got a suit of armor at the top of my stairs i call him dave <laughs> but i've actually got a suit of armor with a giant sword and uh you know if i didn't know that you were doing a knighting ceremony i would have i would literally have got my my giant sword i mean it's about <laughs> six foot long it's like a broadsword so like for real i have a i have a suit of armor at the top of my stairs that's awesome as yeah, you so do once again like i'm floored like thank you for coming on um, no worries beautiful so my first question so it's kind of your life kind of started it seems like it started at 19 years old because you had 31 years of wrestling 31 years of being married to papa knight as i call him yeah <laughs> you had of course you had a life before that but it wasn't all that great like it's well documented and everything but um oh yeah, yeah 19 years old like i was in college at 19 i didn't even have like any but you you were into wrestling you had your family and then so you got married to ricky knight and then you actually had zach right after like at 19 and then i think you had page at 20 right the year after uh yeah i i had after? i had zach at 20 because i had zach in 91 okay and then i i had soraya in 92 in august okay. of 92 and i got married in october of 92. that's crazy so, um yeah yeah that was quite <laughs> mad because uh um i didn't know i was pregnant with soraya and um literally I was only actually physically pregnant for about a month. But we've just realized that both Zach and Soraya both wrestled as fetuses. So, you know, Whoa. that's the claim, to claim they both have got. Because I, I miscarried Zach's twin. Um, yeah. But Zach was still in me when I was went back to wrestling. Um, it wasn't until he came out that we realized that, that he was one of twins. Um, wow. So, yeah. So, so Soraya was seven months. I was seven months pregnant when I found out with her. And Zach was a month. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. And then you had, uh, you're kind of, you're all like a blended family too, because Papa Knight had, you know, kids already too. So you had like instant family, like your whole yeah. life started, it seemed like, you know, you had- Yeah, well, you, 18, 18, I had yeah. three children at 18. So, you, um, you know, as far as, uh, I had uh, one, eight, one 18 months, uh, one nine and one uh, 15. 
and wow. uh, I was an automatic mum. Um, yeah. And the kids, the kids had a real bad time because uh, my husband's ex-wife um, is uh, abusive. And uh, when my, I mean, it's well documented that, that my husband served time in prison and um, was a, a, you know, bit of a gangster. Um, and he was away a lot, uh, whether it be prison or, or work, he was away a lot. Um, <laughs> and and the ex-wife was horrendously abusive to the to those, you know, my, my oldest three. Um, so when I came into their lives, um, they hadn't been cuddled apart from, you know, with Rick and Rick. Rick isn't a huge cuddle. I mean, he is now. Oh, he is now. But um, when I was first with with Rick, he wouldn't even hold my hand. Uh, there was there was none of that. Um, no um, outward emotion. Um, you know, he would cuddle cuddle the kids, but he wouldn't do it in front of people. Uh, so he was he was very like awkward in in that sense. Whereas me, um, I'm uh, very hands on. You know, like. Um, my son, Asa, who's the middle one that doesn't really get spoken a lot about, is uh, in a long-term mental hospital because he's got uh, acute Asperger's, autism, dual personality disorder, schizophrenia, amongst that, they're, they're just amongst the sum, you know, some of the things. And uh, when he was 18 months and, and we were getting him diagnosed, which they don't diagnose at that age, he was just um, violent, set in his ways. And it was just, you know, it was hard. And I was, I was 18. Uh, so at the time we didn't know Asa was mentally ill, um, acutely mentally ill. We didn't know. We just um, we just rode with it. And you know, Roy was a very damaged, horrendously damaged nine-year-old um, who had seen things and had things happen that no nine-year-old should ever, ever witness or ever go through. And his older sister protected him a lot by um, diving over him to cushion a lot of the stuff that was happening. So I had three very damaged, very damaged children, um, and I was a child myself. I was 18, and, um, you know, it's one of those that I, I loved Rick, and part of Rick was his three children. So as far as I'm concerned, that goes without saying. If you, if you, if you love the husband, you, you take whatever comes with him, and I had these three oh, acutely damaged children um, and it took it took a while for them to accept me and to to um, understand that I wasn't going anywhere and that what they said and what they did didn't reflect on how I felt about them. And little by little, um, you know, I what I won them all over by being honest and loyal and showing them how to cuddle. I, you know, I I, I remember staying up many a night with Roy and his dad would be bouncing, he'd be working, um, being doing security, and I'd sit up. And uh, we'd make cakes and we'd go for walks. And then nighttime, we'd just, you know, snuggle and have a cuddle. And in the beginning, Roy would be like this. And then in the end, Roy would turn into me and he fell asleep in my arms. Probably every, because we used to have them Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. And every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, that boy would fall asleep in my arms while his dad was, asleep, was away working. So, um, yeah, it was a... It was a crazy life for a damaged 18 year old um, child abuse victim to go into and become a mother so quickly at such a young age. But it, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it at all. I've loved every minute of being a mother to those children. And I do believe that the way they are today is because me and their dad are still together. Um, you know, we are a package. And, and because we've been together 31 years, I think that gives a child a stability that you know, good things last. Um, and I think that's a, a wonderful message for, for the, the three older, our three older children that, um, you know, if you stick to something and you, and you work through it, that, that you can progress. And I'm very proud of all three of my eldest now. I mean, my youngest two, I mean, they, they, they're part and parcel. They've not had to endure what the older three had to endure. But my older three children, um, have been a huge, um, guidance system for my youngest. Um, I have got an adopted child as well that's uh, between Asa and Zach. Um, and my older three have been a huge force to be reckoned with with, with my younger three. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, we're a close family because we're all broken and we've all, we all fixed each other. So it's, it's kind of wonderful. Yeah, that's a, the good, happy ending. You know, like everybody... They were, everybody was broken, but now, you know, Roy's doing better. He wrote a book about yeah. his life. 
and stuff like that and, and you know Paige is doing well too and Zach and you guys are all like such a strong knit family it's really good to see and it, it's inspiring for other people yeah well we've we've got a thing where we say you don't have to agree with what the family are doing you just have to stand by them so right. if you don't if I don't agree with something that my kids are doing I wouldn't call them out on it in front of people but I would talk to them on their own because it's right. no one else's business but on the surface, irrelevant of what happens, we all stick together, and nobody would ever downcry anybody else in front of you know of, in front of anybody. So we are a very very close knit family. You take them one, you take us all, and that's just how it is. That's the law. Yeah, like the, the big pack of wolves. Because yeah, you've had adversity and people's you know on the internet saying stuff about you guys, and then you see like you saying something, Roy says says something. Like everybody, you're a unit, and that's how a family should be. I think that you've got to answer negativity with positivity. Um, you know, if you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Right. Um, you know, and obviously I've had some horrendous things said about me just recently. <laughs> um, you know, whether people want to believe it or not, it doesn't matter because you're not going to change people's opinions. You know, right. people are allowed to not like you. It's just how it is. You're, you're not everybody's cup of tea. People can say what they want about you. It's how you address that. It's, you know, the people that know you will believe it or they'll disbelieve it. But if they really know you, they'll stand by you. You yeah. know, um, I, I'm not, I, um, if you've noticed, I've not come out and said anything because um, if that's what they think and if that's what they want to say, then that's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, I, I, I've mothered a lot of people in this business and I have been there for a lot of people in this business, uh, uh, certain people included. Um, if, if they feel that all the good stuff I have done um, is uh, worth creating this sort of drama over, then, you know, what can I say? Because, I mean, I can turn around and say the sky is blue and you can argue with me it's grey. So yeah. neither one of us are going to agree, but you either learn to live with it and accept it. And in my eyes, you know, um, there's, uh, there's a handful of people out there that don't like me and think I'm an absolute twat. Well, okay, you know, no problem. There's, uh, you know, there's. I could come out and say different things like, well, what about this time? Well, what about this time? Well, there was that time, and then there was this time. And but what does that make me? Does that am I am I trying to soften what they're saying with stuff that I've done for them? You know, does that does that you know? Are we going to create that drama, or are we just going to go, okay, that's your opinion, that's fine. Uh, wish you told me rather than go to the internet. I'd, I wish you, yeah. I'd be with all of you guys. Over the last three or four months, I've been with every single one of you face to face and in group sessions, been with you. You've come to see me. You put your arms around me in front of people. You've told me you love me. And then you, you, then you say this sort of stuff. So, you know, if that's how they feel about it, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to persuade people I don't know and people I do know to, um, to uh, believe or disbelieve what's been said. What I'd like you people to do is just, Take me as you find me. If you don't like me, that's cool. You don't have to like me. But, you know, I don't want people to stand by me. I don't want people to shout from my corner. I just want people to know me as I am. And if I'm not everyone's cup of tea, then that's fine. It's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cool with not being liked, you know, um, as much as I'm cool with being liked. I'm really cool with not being liked because it just shows that, um, it, it shows spirit, you know. It shows that, it is like life is pedantic so that's that's good we can't all be the same so you know we've addressed that now so now we can move on eh Kathy <laughs> <laughs> yeah because not everybody's gonna like you and not even I mean you don't have to be a celebrity that's just regular life not everybody's gonna like you some people will some people but no won't. not everybody likes my daughter there's yeah. there's a there's you know a load of people out there that will turn around and call her every name under the sun and they'll go well what about this and what about that and then you guys you three there will turn around and go, oh, that's a lie. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. But then those other guys who don't know her, because none of these people know us, will then yeah. turn around and go, but I'm telling you, this is what I know. Yeah, all right, you read it on a fucking chat room, on an exactly. internet forum. And obviously, you know, Facebook is real and Twitter is real. So everything yeah. that's said on that is real. <laughs> um, you know, exactly. so, so I can, I, like, we can sit here and um, I can say, what's your favorite wrestler? And you can all turn around and tell me different ones. And then your reasons. I'll tell you what, take the COVID jab. Um, my sister is anti-vax. 
and I just want the world to open, so I'll take whatever fucking injection they need to give me. You know, stick it in my butt, do what you got to do, <laughs> give me the fucking jab. I want to get back to normal. I want life to go on. But my sister, <laughs> in her infinite wisdom, seems to think that, um, you know, the military are involved and there's this and there's that and, you know, this is what's going to happen and they're encoding you and what a load of bollocks. But she wrote to me when I said I'd had my, my jabs and said, why have you had done that? You shouldn't have that. And I, my reply to her was, when I had, when... I heard that you didn't want yours. I didn't write to you and say you should have the jab. So what gives you the right, because I've had the jab, to write to me and say I shouldn't have had it? You know, give me the same courtesy as what I'm giving you. So that's my blood. That's my sister. And we're two very, very different people. And we're never going to agree on anything. But does that make us bad people? It doesn't, you know. So life is life. You, you guys are page fans, but I can find another three people that hate my daughter. We'll make yeah, the world go sadly. <laughs> sadly, but how yeah. anyone can can dislike <laughs> her, I don't know. I mean, like, come on, you know, we have a cheerleading squad here for Paige, and you know, yeah. but but it's okay <laughs> if people don't like her. It is okay if people prefer Sasha Banks, if people prefer Charlotte, if they think my daughter is a bitch. It's okay. It's fine. It's no problem. We're we're cool with that. You know, yeah. you carry on doing your stuff because it doesn't affect us in hours. I mean, yep. you got to remember we've done we've done so much stuff this year that's good. And that's in lockdown. And yeah. all people write to me on Twitter and they keep tagging me in stuff. It's like, oh, okay, that's what you believe. That's fine. That's okay. I'm not going to answer you. I'm not yeah. going to answer you. I'm not going to get drawn into it. So you carry on calling me every name under the sun and, you know, tell me what a bad person I am. And, uh, you know, do that to my Twitter because I'm on there once a week and I've got a guy that goes in there and cleans it all up for me. So I don't think. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then, uh, you know, Paige gets all this stuff too. She'll get like these oh, people that that say stuff. Did in you were you on her her Twitch? Oh I'm my there god, all the time. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I'm a mod for her, and it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. They you think know, they're suck cute. your mum. Yeah. They suck think your mum. They think they're cute, and they say stuff. You know, that's happened. You know, this was like three years ago. They're still saying stuff. Oh, you think you edgy saying this? No, you're gonna get deleted, and then like you subbed. You're yeah. stupid. But you yeah, subbed. You've, 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 you've just subbed to, say this. to come yeah. in. So you've paid to come yeah. in to call my daughter a whore, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be like, bad. That doesn't make sense. Well, <laughs> thank you for your five ninety nine, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> Let's exactly. have a few more of you come in and do that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we'll be rich of all you can say, you know. Yeah. Thank you for talking <laughs> crap. You're making me rich now. Like, thank yes, you. Yes. You know, like... Come on. Come on in. Sub yeah. only. <laughs> Pay for the sub and call me a bitch. You do that. <laughs> say what you gotta say. The mods will get you out. And you, we got your money. We're good. You know, like they, you really, they, everybody's winning, but them. There you go. <laughs> Six pound a month. Go, yeah. go, go and build another. Uh, 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 you know, like because they, they'll, they'll build another um, uh, Twitch profile, won't they? Yeah. So they've just yeah. paid five ninety nine to call my daughter a whore. And then they get barred, and then they go back, make another Twitch profile, make another yeah. five ninety nine, and go back to call her another whore. And you think, like, yep. dude, I've just got like twelve pounds off you, yep. and, and you're then... calling my daughter a whore. Keep coming, <laughs> keep coming. <laughs> we'll buy a mansion with this shit, right? <laughs> then they have uh, so that when you get banned, there's unbanned requests, and they're like, oh, please, you know, they talk crap there, or they're like, oh, I was just kidding, and they're like, no, you had your chance already. That's done. Oh, uh, we That's we had good. a troll bot come into our Twitch, and um, I mean, to be honest, my mods now are fantastic because, like, yeah. you see the names come up, and it's like suckmydick.com, oh. and it's like, right, okay, we know you're a troll. Yeah, we know. We, we know what's going on here. And there'll be another one called Piss Flaps. And then oh. there'll be Vaginal Juice. And you're like, really? No. Really? <laughs> so so all of my mods straight away are like, come on in. Come on. Let me ban yeah. you. So their fingers are on the button, especially right. Sammy J. Their, their <laughs> yeah. fingers are on the button and they're just, they're just waiting. And then, <laughs> and then next thing, though, it's the pouring of abuse that comes. And my guys, they call it fishing. Yeah. You know, they hook that maggot. They hook them. And, yeah. and, like, now it's a game. We're all ready. As soon as the first one comes in and you see the name, and it's like, here we go. Yeah. Game on. So it's like, you know, <laughs> mods to your corners. Yeah. And, it, and like, now, whereas before it used to be kind of a big deal, now it's game time. It's like, let's, let's see how much balls you guys have got behind your computers. <laughs> yeah, it made it uh, – it got to the point where Rhea – I call her Rhea. Rhea Page. That's her real name. You know, Rhea. 
She yeah. uh, she's made it into a game where she reads the unbanned requests, and they had one guy on there that just kept going, and she was like, "Well, five subs, I'll give you more of what this guy's saying." <laughs> so she turns right. she turns it into a game, like, uh, and the guy's just there talking crap, and it's like, "This is entertaining." You're that's actually, the way to do it. You're giving yeah. her content for her Twitch channel, so thank you. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. I mean, this guy is paying money to abuse her, and she's turning around and earning money by showing yeah. people the abuse he's given to her. Yep. And that's like, guys, seriously, she's so thick skinned. She's made of steel. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that my daughter doesn't hurt because she does, because all of us are yeah. human. And, you know, um, I'm still, you know, at the back of my head, I've still got all of that stuff from last year. It's still there. And and there's some days, I mean, I got horrendous PTSD from that. I, I was yeah. seriously sick. Um, I really nearly went all the way with that one. Um, you know, and my, my family were on tender hooks there for a while. Um, but, you know, I still have the, you know, like the the things in my head about, you know, oh, my God, people don't like me on the, on the Internet. And and it sounds really childish now, but it, when it affects your everyday life, it's really bad. And yeah. even though I'm kind of thick skinned about it now because I've it's like, OK, you know, I've, I've put my big girl pants on now. You don't like me. You think I'm a cunt. OK, no problem. <laughs> Not a problem. All right. You know, what do you want me to do? What What is it you want me to do from this information? You don't like me. You think I'm a horrible person. I'm a bully. I'm a twat. I'm a scumbag. I'm this. I'm that. Okay. All right. Well, what do you want me to do? Tell me what you want me yeah. to do with this information. You know, I'm, I'm 50 in October. I've got my own wrestling business. I've got my own company. I've got my own life. I've got my own stuff. I'm, I'm retiring from the international circuit anyway. What? What do you want me to do about the situation? And my daughter right. is in the same thing. It's like she gets this abuse held at her all the time. What is it you want the outcome to be from your torrent of abuse? What right. is it you want? Do you want her to top herself so that everyone can say what a lovely person she was? Do you want her to step away from wrestling, but then she'll make it big in the TV world? And what you can do, scam her on there as well. You're going to call her a cunt on there and try and stop her. So you're going to stop her trying to live and earn and be a person and be Soraya Jade because you decide in your infinite wisdom that she's a cunt. What is, what is the end goal? What do people want? Right. I mean, if people said to us, well, this is the outcome we want and the 20 or so people on the internet that are just being assholes or being truthful or, you know, it's their perception and they say, well, this is the end goal we want. We want you, Soraya and I, out the fucking wrestling business because you're a twat. Well, it's not going to happen because no. I own my own company. <laughs> right. What? Yeah. What What now? So, so what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to tell all the girls in the world not to work for me. Okay, I have a training school. They're I'll gonna make my own anyway. stuff. Yeah. So then, so then <laughs> you're not going to use any of my girls that I bring through my school. Well, that's prejudice against them. So your right. dislike for me is stopping those girls from getting, so you're being bullies now. You know, I, if I knew what the end goal of these people are, then, you know, fine. You know, same with Raya, same with all of my family. Tell us the end goal. Don't keep sitting there slagging us. Tell us what you want us to do about it. Once we realize there's fuck all anyone can do about it, you go and live your life and we'll go and live ours and never right. the train shall meet. Then, you know, <laughs> If you yep. eat, if you eat ice cream today, it's not going to affect me tomorrow, is it? <laughs> you know, it's just, I just don't. I don't understand sometimes what what people want by um, from opinion, you know, because that's all it is is opinion, and you're going to get people that are going to cause controversy, irrelevant, because that's how they are. They're programmed that way to create controversy. Now, if any of the girls that spoke out against me feel they have a valid point, or the world thinks they have a valid point. Or, or anything like that, that's that's fine. It's okay. It's okay to feel that way about me. It's okay to, f to feel about that way to my daughter. What's not okay is to try and stop us working and earning a living so that we, you know, I mean, that's that's wrong. You know, right. what, what if, if they want sorries because they think they've been treated badly, well, sorry. If that's what you want, sorry. I don't know why what we have to do, but... You know, if half the world said sorry to the other half of the world, then maybe we can live in peace, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, or unless, some people... unless someone turns around and says, 
that no you can't i'm gonna get my charger no because we <laughs> eat porridge and you don't eat porridge so we don't like you anymore <laughs> you know, like, that's, that's, sorry i'm gonna take you for a walk in my house um oh, you know that, that's how crazy <laughs> yes you are oh like a smell is most dinner <laughs> yeah i've got to plug you in because you're on eight percent and it's like i'm gonna lose you yeah we don't want that to happen <laughs> no we're on a roll kathy <laughs> Yeah, right on my my turn. Blip, she's off. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, so. Kathy's <laughs> on. Jules is off. <laughs> Tessayanara. Right, yeah. Okay, we're we're good. Oh, uh, we're wobbling a bit. <laughs> right, okay. I'm gonna no. have to hold you because my computer won't allow me to <laughs> to stand you up. Right, maybe maybe my salt and pepper. Hey, go look close up. <laughs> there we go. All right. So right, you want my so. salt and pepper now? So. <laughs> So talking about, you know, more stuff, how people talk about things, uh, there's actually like a, at least an 18 year gap between you and, and Ricky Knight. Did people ever give you crap for that? Yeah. Oh, all the time, all no. the time. <laughs> um, but there's, there's actually, and it sounds really sweet, really weird because my birthday is the 19th of October. So in, mm -hmm. in numeric, it's 1910. And there's yeah. exactly 19 years and 10 months between my husband. And, wow. um, you know, it's, you know, that those numbers tend to follow us around a little bit. Um, but when we, when we were first together, I was 18 um, and he was 38. And, um, you know, his friends was the first point of call. And, you know, they my husband was into big, buxom, drinking women, you know, <laughs> blondes, <laughs> you know. And he turned up with a flat-chested brunette. So I was completely against the norm to what he was used to. And all of his friends were um, within the 30 to 40 bracket. Um, you know, like late 30s, uh, uh, late 40s in that 10 year bracket. Um, and there was me, little 18 year old. Um, and I didn't, I, I, I got a hell of a lot of stick, hell of a lot of stick. You know, it was never going to last. I mean, I remember when, when I was working and my bosses, um, like, in fact, it's the guy that does, um, who works for us now. He gets all our account stuff. He was actually our agent, used to be my boss um, back in 1990 when I was uh, a chef. And, and him and three other guys brought me into the office and said, you can't go out with a wrestler. They got a girl on every camp. Um, he's going to do this. He's going to do that. You're going to end up hurt. And it was like, you know, I don't know why they were telling me this because there was other girls that was going with wrestlers, you know, but for some reason they pulled me aside and said, you shouldn't, you, you know, we, we don't think this is right for you. And the delight that I took taking Zach as a babe in arms back to that camp and showing these guys, oh, it ain't going to last, huh? you know, baby on the tip job. Um, so to me, it was uh, it was a case of like, stand up for yourself. I mean, my husband taught me a lot. I was I was a broken 18 year old. And I, I've seen the world and I've, I traveled all, all over the United Kingdom um, in his shadow, because obviously they were the super flies. And I was in their shadow a lot. But it was the stigma of the age gap that came before anything, because everyone was going like, are oh, you out with your dad? Knowing full well he wasn't my dad, you know, you know, like we'd we'd go to parties and it's like, you know, here you go, father and daughter, and it's like, and th these are guys that are meant to go back with my husband a long time, and you know, we just we just laughed it off, you know, as you do, <laughs> you're an asshole, um, so you just you just like let it go over your head, um, but you know, when the children started coming and they realised that I wanted uh, Roy, Asa, and Nikki. And um, I was quite prepared to stand up for myself against the ex-wife um, and women that had the hots for my husband. Um, and I was a, a feisty, very feisty young girl. Um, I mean, I was quiet and I was, I was, you know, but I was, I was 18 for Christ's sake. So, I mean, you know, it, it's hard to, to deal with people when you've been brought up in the Victorian age, because my, my, I was brought up Victorian standards. We were still smacked. We, you know, we, we went to bed, you weren't allowed away from the table until you finished your food. You you know, it was a very rigid and very strict upbringing that, that I had. And another one was be seen and not heard and don't speak till spoken to. And, um, you know, respect your elders. And I've got people like 20 odd years older than me um, bringing out photo albums of my husband, husband's exes um, and showing me. And, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, this is really awkward. Um, but then, you know, when we went on, we, we went on together, my husband was very protective of me. Um, he, 
you know, once we were, especially once we were married, he used to kind of turn around and go, it's my wife. You know, he used to leave me deal with stuff, but he was very protective and very vocal about the fact that, you know, the age gap is no big deal. And and the thing is now, nobody mentions the age gap. I mean, I'm I'm 49 and he's, I'm, I'm 50 this year and he's um, 69 this year. Nobody mentions the age gap now. And yet it's still the same age gap. You know, and, and what we did is, is when, when he got into his 40s, late 40s, and I became into my late 20s, for something magical happened that somehow we done this. And we we were on an even keel. And that because we'd already been together a, quite a while, um, the age, age gap thing never came into it. But the only people now that, that are worried about the age gap now, believe it or not, are the children. Um, having an older dad, it's... Uh, it, they get quite angry about the fact that, that Rick is 20 years older than me because they're not ready um, to, you know, to, to see Rick age. And, and I mean, he doesn't. I mean, the bloke doesn't age. He still he still looks in his, his like late 40s myself. I, I think that. I still think he's a very good-looking bloke and he still turns me on. But the kids are very angry that their dad is 20 years older than me and um, they adore him like with a passion they absolutely adore their dad and the only time the age gap comes up now is via the children yeah i know uh it's a good thing with technology and everything because with covid i know like he was quarantined with you in the house and like uh you know roy and and zach would like knock on the door the window and like that's how you guys would see each other for a yeah. while y'all couldn't even visit just for well, he's diabetic, you see, so yeah. he was high risk. So we weren't allowed out the door. We, I mean, right. I went out an hour a day to walk the dog, and um, I was allowed to go and get food. Um, but apart from that, we were in quarantine together for a, a year, um, and it was really difficult to not see the children, not see the grandchildren. Um, you know, we had to do it through a glass, and the, and the grandchildren didn't understand because we're very hands-on grandparents, and they couldn't understand and. I remember a couple of times during last year uh, where uh, Devon and Caden, they've come round and I've sneakily like gone to the front door and I've opened it a crack and they've poked their heads around the corner and we've all looked around and no one was watching and we've fucking cuddled each other. Aww. And it, it was, <laughs> you know, it was, I'm bawling my eyes out, but Zach and everyone didn't know and Rick didn't know because we didn't want anyone to know. So me and the right. grandchildren are sobbing on the step, having a cuddle <laughs> because they 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 miss the cuddles and they miss seeing their nana and, and granddad and stuff and coming in and and uh, so yeah, secret cuddles was the name of the game. And I did turn up for their birthdays in giant dinosaur suits. That's what and I was going to was bring that. up. Too. <laughs> that made me laugh. I was like, you guys made it work, like with the whole T Rex outfit. I was chuckling, like that was so funny. <laughs> oh, the amount of times we got tagged in dinosaur stuff. Yeah. But you know now, <laughs> because of my Twitch. I have penises, I have yeah. turkeys, <laughs> I have, uh, oh my God, I've got uh, six the, foot inflatable the, shit. The shit emoji, <laughs> yeah, you dressed up as the shit emoji. I was a shit emoji, <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm so glad that they've, they've, they've worked their way out of that because my husband turned around and he said, he said, you're so lucky that the guys have like stopped dressing you up because, um, I mean, I was, I was a fucking fairy at Christmas. I was Tinkerbell, like, what the fuck? I had to wear, oh, mate. I think the worst one, the worst outfit to date has got to be the Barbie one. That has got to be the worst <laughs> one. They had me in six-inch fluorescent pink shoes with bobby <laughs> socks, pink bobby socks, and this pink tutu thing. And then this, no, it wasn't. It was, uh, it was sequin shorts, pink sequin shorts, and a, and a pink unitard thing that split my difference. <laughs> I swear to God, I felt, you know, you know, when you get a piece of glass through your fingers and you blow and you get that reed thing, <laughs> that is what it was. Every time the wind blew, you could hear like a, a, a flipping buzzing and it wasn't coming from me top half. It was coming from me bits. <laughs> I was, I was, the wind was like, horrendous. I was at that stream for a little while and I think uh, Paige was in there too. And she's like, mom, sit down, stop it. <laughs> Mate, I, I, I was not impressed. I, I was not impressed. And like, I even say now, they go, wear the Barbie stuff. And it's like, no, blonde wig, not a fucking chance. Like, no, that's not happening. It's only well, Twitch that can make me wear a dress. Yeah. Papa Knight was a trooper, too, because he was dressing up with you, too. He was Deadpool. You know, other oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> Deadpool costume is, like, really good. <laughs> I keep saying to him, we should cut a hole in that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's talk about Shimmer for a little bit. Uh, you had to actually fight Paige, who was Brittany Knight in Shimmer. Yeah. Uh, how was that? Was it like, uh, you know, hey, you did? I told you to put the dishes away, and you didn't. Like, boom. Like, you know, did you take a little bit extra out of um, being a mom to be and honest, a daughter? <laughs> to be honest, me and Raya beat the crap out of each other. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, she was she is one of my toughest opponents to date, um, and she took no shit. She she absolutely took no shit. Um, you know, I remember when uh, one Boxing Day we were on the camp and um, I I broke the cartilage on her nose accidentally. It was just a it was a mishap. And the, um, like two days later, we were at Beckles Town Hall and she turned around and she went receipt and she <laughs> fucking bust my nose like completely. And it was like fuck, flipping <laughs> nutcase. Um, but I loved I loved being the one because. And um, when the girls leave, they get their, um, you know, their choice of matches of who they want to wrestle. And Raya turned around and went, I want my mum. And and knowing full well, because we'd done the circuit together, we'd been around uh, Europe together, we'd done the UK circuit together. And, um, you know, we, we literally were doing our matches or, you know, it's me and her. And I remember the last show that I'd done over here um, was for John Fremantle. And we were, uh, um, we were down there, I think it was, Bournemouth might have been um and I remember backstage I think it's in the documentary uh the actual documentary the film was taken from and you see me sobbing backstage because I knew that was going to be the last time that I could wrestle her because we'd come back from shimmer and that was the final job the John Fremantle was the final job and I was just beside myself to think that I'd never get to wrestle my daughter again and you know, after such an awesome time at Shimmer and we had the send off and everything, and you know, you come back to reality and then it kind of hits you. It's like, oh, you know, she's really going. You know, we've done the last Shimmer together. And at the time, I didn't think I was going back. Um, so it was like, wow, it's an end of an adventure. So it was, uh, it was quite, quite crazy. But I, I love wrestling, Raya. I, I just love wrestling her. She's so versatile. Um, she's such a, a great opponent. And, she never moans. She never groans. Um, she gives as good as she gets. She's tough. The girl is tough. You know, like in everyday life, the girl is tough. You know, and um, it shows in her work. But she's one of the kindest, most wonderful human beings that I've, I've ever had the pleasure to know on this planet. And I'm happy that I made her. Yeah, she, uh, I've told her before, she's like a real life Wonder Woman. Like everything that comes at her, she's just, bing, bing. Like she deflects it. I mean, she's it does amazing. It does get to her, it, but she's like one of the strongest people that I've ever seen, like in my life. She it just does get to it. her, Kathy. It does. Yeah, it, does. it does. I mean, people, we, we've got a saying in our family, save your tears for the pillow. So, yeah. you know, that's the best place to put them. Don't let anyone see you weak. Um, I mean, they say that, you know, you, weakness is okay. You can show weakness. Well, yeah, weakness is okay as long as you control it. So you can, you can, you can be perceived to be weak, but control how weak you want to be perceived. Um, and, you know, we, we always say to Raya, save your tears for the pillow, kiddo, you know, and, and we all do that. Every single one of us, we all do that. So, you know, she is a, she is a tough little bugger, but she's also got a very soft heart. Right. As much as you could be Wonder Woman, I mean, we're all human and there's times. Yeah, but we Superman were... had kryptonite, didn't he? Exactly. So, and you know, even the strongest times... person has something. There's times on her Twitch she's walked away and cried because of these trolls that we talked about earlier, and it's like it it you know it makes me want to punch the screen. It's like don't yeah. It does what depend they, though. What depends. Do they get out of it, you know. It's like okay, you made her cry. Are you happy now that she cried? She walked away to cry, and she has to compose herself and then come back and yeah. be on Twitch again. And it's like yeah, but then they'll be going to school the next day, going oh, I made Paige cry. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! You like know. you did, you did something in your life. Like you know, you got out of your basement to like talk crap to somebody. Yeah. Like, so somebody they're gonna go and tell two people. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna go and tell their two friends. I made Paige cry last night. Well, that's great. That's yeah. awesome. That you are you, an you know? amazing person. Yeah. Yeah, amazing right? person. <laughs> we think that you are absolutely awesome, and you know we love the fact that you've done that. So yeah. now fuck off and leave us alone because you've had your ten minutes. Yeah. That was the thing too, like people would talk crap about her on Twitter and then you see, uh, cause everybody floods to that person's Twitter page and that tweet gets deleted <laughs> like right after. And it's like, okay, well you, you talk the talk, now walk the walk. Like you got all this yeah. crap, you want the attention, the attention's on you for the, all the wrong reasons now. 
but you got your attention. Yeah, the internet is um, is a cesspool of hate, um, yeah. but it's over it, that overshadows the fact that it actually is a wonderful linkage system um, that unites, yeah. and it, it it's uh, public opinion can be swayed by the internet. Um, but there's this. You know, 80% is, is a, it's a lovely place and it's a learning place and it's a place where, you know, you go to Google Maps and Google Earth and you can travel in your own front room to different parts of the world right now as it looks right now. And, and it's just, to me, it's amazing. And I can look up anything I want to look up and it's there at a fingertip. But then you get some twat that goes on internet and turns around and goes, you're a nonce. Yep. <laughs> really? I've just been on Google Earth going around the flipping, the swamps of flipping, you know, bloody uh, Florida. And I've just been, been over to Cuba and I've just gone to Madagascar and had a journey through the flipping jungles. And you've, you've just completely spoiled that by coming in my Twitter and going, you're a nonce. <laughs> oh, yeah. so it's, you know, for, for, I mean, I know that there has to be, you know, good karma, bad karma. And I know that yeah. it has to be yin and yang and there's got to be good and bad and blah, 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 blah. I know that. But Jesus Christ, every day, is no yeah. one happy anymore. <laughs> no it one seems like and, it is. You know, Nobody oh, knows. lovely day. <laughs> and instead of going out, they go, oh, lovely day. I'm going to go on the internet all day and call everyone a cunt. <laughs> you know, can't you just go outside and say it's a lovely day to go to the beach? You I know. know. I think a lot of people need to go outside and, like, just look at the sun. Like, go outside. Stop being on the internet yes, all day. Stop being see-through. Stop it. Like, Stop I it. know there's COVID, but like you can literally go outside. Like COVID will not get you if you just go out your front door, you know, uh, at your house. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Get the like, fuck out outside there and have a life. Put your phones down. <laughs> Put your phones down. Right. So uh, I have to ask, uh, talking about Shimmer, because this cracks me up every time. So uh, there was a match when you're tag teaming with uh, Brittany Knight, we'll call her at the time. Uh, and Rebecca Knox, a uh, one Becky Lynch, was uh, your manager. Talking about the dance, aren't you? Yes. How did you keep <laughs> a straight face when they were dancing? Because I lose my crap every time. Like I lose my shit every time I watch that video. Like she. Yeah, if you know well, it, I go. And you're, just, you're so like. They go that know? way. Yeah. <laughs> I go that way, and it's like. I can't fucking do this. And I go over that way and I, I just zone in on the fucking crowd. And like in the corner of my eye, there's this uh, flipping Rebecca Knox doing a shanty in the ring with Saray. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell. I've got to get for a match with these two now. But them two together, it's like her. And, uh, it was like Jesse McKay, um, I remember yeah. has. Um, so like when they were skater, Jesse McKay, uh, Rebecca Knox and, and, and Saraya, and they were all together in the room, shit happens. <laughs> in in the craziest possible way shit happens you know I, and when uh, like, yeah one day i was like i have to ask funny. her like if we were ever on this podcast i have to ask her because you see like in the video they're cutting up and you just like deadpan and i'm like she's gotta oh, be I'm, laughing I'm, inside but she's hiding it really well <laughs> to be honest um it's i've broken character uh probably twice in my career um, because once I'm zoned, once once I'm behind that curtain and um, the first bars of my music go on and I can all the chairs move in because people don't want to be at the front, they want to go to the back and people at the back, they want to come at the front, you know. So um, if you notice on any shimmer thing, on any shimmer tape and if you hear the first bars of my music, you hear a rumbling, that's people getting the fuck out of the way. Um, so as soon as I hear the first bars come up and I hear those chairs being moved, I'm like, okay they're ready for me so then I go into like a zone so nothing else matters I don't really hear what what's been saying I'm um it's like I've got headphones on it's it's very strange and I'm so completely caught up in in the violence of the character that um I can't have anything dissuade me um but just recently uh, about a year ago I was at a show and um this was a company that I swore that hell would freeze over before I stepped foot in um and um, I'm not going to mention the name, but um, I went out and got probably one of the biggest pops of my career. And um, I I tried to go out there as, as Saray and I, and I'm all mean and all miserable and all moody and I'm up for a fight. And I got a stand innovation and uh, like this roar went up and it felt like it hit me like a force. And 
like it was like a wind that hit me and and the emotion that I got I my chin started to go I'm 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 completely lost because I've been knocked out of character and um it, it's only happened it happened at the time at Preston but I actually physically got knocked out of my zone um and and I became Julia stood on that uh in in the the the, the at the top of the ramp what the fuck am I doing? What, what, what? I didn't expect that because I just thought that people would be, uh, would react to me differently. And um, to get the pop that I got and the standing over that I got, that, um, yeah, it actually, the impact knocked me out of my character. So, you know, there's, there's, there's good and bad, there's good and bad. But uh, Noxie and Raya, that is the one time where I've had to turn around <laughs> and go, oh, I'm going fucking that way. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> I'm not doing anything with you them. Can I'm, see I'm it done. Too. Yeah, you can see it in yeah. the video. Like the entrance, y'all are together, and then they go their way, and you go your way. And I then swear. <laughs> yeah. So I, in my head, I'm feeling I'm never going to keep this up. You're right. And then you can. And in see the ring, like, I'm, I'm. I've gone to the corner, and I'm. Yeah. And, and they're, they're fucking going for it. Like you know, giving yeah. it all this one. I'm like, fuck. Because you can see, I think it's the ring announcer or the referee, like when Paige started doing that twirly thing, like she was going to spank uh, Becky. He starts like, he's all like, he's trying to, yeah. like, hot, hot, hot. he's just like, <laughs> like I, I yeah, well, Dave thought it was hilarious, <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, I'm I, I in there and I'm thinking, I'm not breaking. I'm not, I know they want to, I know what they're trying to do and I'm not fucking doing it. I'm not breaking, Raya. I'm not happening. <laughs> And she was so extra too. She's like shot, yay! Like shot, like being all like she was super extra that day. <laughs> it was so funny. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, she was. Yeah, the first time I'd I'd seen Noxy for ages. I mean, because like um, we looked after her when she came over here, and she, we brought her back here. To, to be fair, because um, she'd worked for this promoter in London, and she was meant to fly back to Ireland, and her dad was going to pick her up from the airport, and. Um, the dude went, haven't got you a ticket. See you later. Bye. And she's just stranded in, wow. at, at the show. So me and Rick were there. So it's like, here, Bex, come back with us, darling. You're, you're fine. You you know, jump jump in the car. We'll get you home. So we bought the ticket. She had to stay here overnight. So I've I've just got to go and turn my, my veggies down. Um, you know, <laughs> she had to come and stay with us overnight. I know. Look at me go. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, so um, we did. We had her stay overnight, and um, we then took her to the airport because we could get her a, a flight out from Norwich Airport. So we we brought her back here, and I made her a dinner, and you know, usual shit, usual shit. Fed her up, <laughs> give her a nice hot shower and a cup of tea and a cuddle, and and she was away. So, yeah, uh, so I call job, you mom at night, done. but there really is, you know, you are everybody's mom because that's what I wanted to talk about next too. Like you house so many people, like when they come to England, like Scott Hall's been at your house, Mick Foley, and you're actually cooking a roast right now. Like you're saying, you know, you got to turn the veggies down. <laughs> so you cook a roast for all these people. And uh, like, I know I heard Mick Foley talking about this roast and you've had so many people at your house. They, they basically stay at your house when they're on tour in the UK. So you're literally yeah. like mom and night. <laughs> to be honest, you there's, there's a guy. <laughs> right, we, we uh, got about two summers ago, we were all sat outside here and there was me, Rick and Warren. We just had a barbecue. So there was like all the staff had come over. Well, they're not staff, they're friends. Everyone had come over and we'd fed them all up and they were all just saying their goodbyes. And there's me, Rick and Warren. We're just stuck out here and, it, and it's, it's dark. You know, we've just got the chimney going. So there's a little bit of old fire flickering. Then all of a sudden we go, we hear this, hey. How are you guys? And this dude's come come up our back garden. Now the wow. year before we we'd put him up because he had nowhere to stay. So it's like, well, come back here, dude. You know, our house is always open. He was very respectful, really nice guy. And he, he worked with us for a season. But he just jumped <laughs> on an airplane, got in a taxi, and turned up with his bag. It's like, hey, how are you guys wow. doing? I'm back. <laughs> So, the, like, the joke is, um, because, like, anybody, most of the people that come to Norwich to work for us, I mean, um, unless, I mean, there's a lot of people that obviously go and, and stay in hotels if they, 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 it's their choice, but they can come home here, um, I'll make them food, I'll wash their gear, I'll, I'll you know, give them the, the personal touch. It's, it's not a problem. I've got no problem with that. you just got to <laughs> deal with my, hello, Dan. you just got to deal with my dog. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I mean, Scott Hall was here three or four times. Um, we've had... Oh Christ! 
We've had we've every major star that's that's worked for us has stayed here with us, and most of them are in Raya's bedroom because that's the bigger bedroom. So we've got like a big cast iron bed and and everything like that up there, and that's where um that's where they stay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I told you before as we were just kind of trying to get sorted out when my computer was being a dick. Um, when Mick Foley was here, he was in the back garden. We had this this big table out, and everyone was sat round it, and everyone was eating. And uh, Rick was at the head of the table, and Mick was right next to him. And then Mick, about they've well, been talking solidly for about thirty minutes, forty five minutes. And uh, Mick turned around and he went, "Hey, Rick, I don't mean to kind of bring this to your attention." He said, "But do you know that we've been talking to each other through your wife's crotch? There was a washing line." <laughs> And there was a pair of my fucking G-strings hanging right near Mick's head. <laughs> no one had noticed. <laughs> so every time Mick turned around like that to talk to Rick, they were talking through the leg <laughs> of my G-strings to each other. So Mick Foley is eating the roast of my back, my back garden, talking through my G-strings to my husband. So you still hang the clothes on the line? <laughs> the clothes go on the clothes line? Not anymore. No, we've, I, we've, had a, we've had a building built there now. So um, I'm, I'm uh, making a bar. I'm going to do a bar and everything so that when we have our barbecues, we're going to have our own bar and everything in the back garden. So, um, yeah, no, there's, there's no more lines now. I've got a rotary <laughs> dryer. <laughs> so that's out there. So, that's yeah. awesome. So, it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's good fun. It's good fun. I mean, we get to meet a lot of people. Um, I mean, like Mickey tends to sometimes be a bit of a dick to people. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think. There was one of the guys that came here and he didn't like him at all. Um, oh, uh, Guerrero was his name. Uh, oh, what's his name? He's in AEW. Oh, God, brain fart. I can't think of him. I think it's one of the Guerreros. I can't think. I can't think of his name. Um, but he, but he came here, and uh, and Mickey was a little bit dubious about him. Um, it took about two hours for for Mick to decide that he did that. Uh, Hoof and Toot, Hoovy, yeah, Hoovy came in. Um, okay. But yeah. the, the silly thing about it was, Hoovy's come through the 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 uh, like because we've got a hallway before we get to our front room, and he's come up the hallway, and as I've opened the door, Mickey's at the door, and he's growling at Hoovy. So I said, Hoovy, just go in, darling. Go and sit down. I'll make you a brew. Mickey will be all right in a minute. I'll, I'll come over because I have to touch the person. As soon as I touch the person, they're, um, you know, Mickey's good. He knows that everything is good. And uh, I said to the dude behind Hoovy, I went, um, did, you want, did you want a cup of tea? Because oh, I thought he'd brought Hoovy to me because um, I, I only got told that the, uh, the taxi was bringing just, just one. I didn't know he was bringing two. So I've turned around to the dude in the hallway and I've gone, um, are you coming in? Did you want a cup of tea or do you have to shoot off? And Rick's gone, who are you talking to? And I've gone, the, okay, there was a guy in the hallway and he disappeared in the time it took me to go, well, the guy in the hallway. The woman, <laughs> I'm speaking to this dude and the next minute I'm not. But then when wow. I turn around, he stood with Hoovy and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, so my dog was not reacting to Hoovy, he was reacting to the dude that was with Hoovy. Oh. And uh, apparently, Hoovy had just um, had just had a a, a bereavement. Um, yeah, mm. apparently, I I told Hoovy all about this bereavement, and I said, "Look, I'm sorry, but there's this dude with you, and he's just kind of <laughs> he's kind of stood there, and this is what he's wearing." And and like Hoovy just went like completely white. It's like, oh my fucking god, <laughs> this is really so strange because <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but I've just had a telephone call to say, and it was like, okay, um, okay, <laughs> well, my my dog doesn't like it. <laughs> Hey, puppy, we're talking about you. Come it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's the only one that's, yeah, yeah, my poorly boy. He's all right, though. He got How is he, by the way? Is he getting any better? Um, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing okay. We got another vet's appointment tomorrow. But he, the antibiotics are working, so he's a very expensive dog. He does diamond yeah. paper chips. <laughs> what, darling? Come on. Well, we love you, Mickey. <laughs> he's, he's looking at me. He's, he's, he's got his paw on my leg at the moment. It's like, but mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. You see a little bit of yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's just trying to come up. He's a big old boy. But you're going to have to wait. Mommy's not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Remy was talking about like how WWE should uh, should hire you as like a backstage agent and stuff like that. But you actually do stuff like that like you give seminars and everything 
So yeah. uh, I, you actually had one when I saw you at Roll on the Rise. You had a, a seminar at Booker T School, and yeah, you, you give pointers on things. And if that, something that um, people might not know about was it was you that so Jenna Lin wears these karate headbands. And when uh, in the the match that you had, uh, in it was like it's called like Bay 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 Viver. I can't even say it. The Bay Viver series is kind of like Survivor series, but with women. So it was like four on four, and you were the mystery partner with uh, AQA and Jenna Lynn and yeah. uh, and Haley or Holly. I don't know how to say her name, but uh, so Jenna Lynn was wearing headbands. And the thing in the match was, uh, you know, like Rachel Rose and he uh, Heather Monroe, they were the, on the other side of the team. So they kept pulling Jenna Lynn's band off. But it was, so she'd come back with like another colored band. But that was actually your idea. Like a lot of people don't know that. So you were yeah. actually giving pointers at the seminar. So like, that's just like, you know, how do you have the mind? I know you've been in there for 31 years, but you just have a mind for what works and you'd like, you, cause you pretty much just was like, yeah. I have an idea. Here's the idea. And then it worked. Cause like the crowd loved it. Like I was sitting in the audience. I was like, this is so cool. Like she takes, they take the blue one away. She had a yellow one. They took the yellow one away. She had a red one. And it was like, that was all your was idea. Just running about trying to make them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing was, is that she really wanted to wear it because she liked, she liked doing this karate gimmick. And I was going, but, I mean, you know, like Hercules had his hair when his hair was cut off, then that was it. Yeah. I said, so if you if you promote that the power is in your headband, when the girls take the headband out, you just kind of grab another headband, put it on. You know, it's to me, it's a very simple way of getting a, a comedic rise because it's not all about violence and it's not all about, um, you know, you, there can be humor. Um, and I just think, <laughs> you know, like the crowd will then respond to that. So it's like it's like uh, Madison Eagles with the forks. It's it's a it's a very visual responsive thing and and it works. Um, it's like with Sue Young when when I met Sue, she um, she was a a, a very, very ordinary um, two piece uh, female wrestler that that you know like like thousands of other female wrestlers out there. She wore like this this two piece suit and she she didn't stand out and she was a very beautiful, very technically um, very good female wrestler. And I remember we were at Shine and I'm sat outside with her and I've gone, do you know what, Sue? I said, I've had an idea for you. I says, and I don't know. So it's, it's going to take some work and I don't know if you're going to do it, but I've got a gimmick for you that will set you apart from anybody else. And if you're willing to do it, the trans it's got to be over a transition though. And she went, she went, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. What, what have you got? And I said, well, you know, those, those um, horror movies that you get in Japan and they've always got the same character. They've always got the girl in the white dress with the long black hair over the face and the face is all white and you don't really see them and, and it's all purple eyes and they, you know, like you look at the ring and you look at the grudge, you look at all of this, it's always the same fucking ghost. It's always the same character. They, this flipping crazy maniac, long haired Asian girl in a fucking dirty white dress. And, uh, I, and I said, I'm not being funny, girl. You look just like her. And she kind of looked at me and I said, look, you, you, you can act. Uh, you've got the right face to do the makeup, to do the, um, the aggressive samurai fighting makeup with all the, you know, with the, with the thing and a bit of blood in your mouth. I says, and, and, the, and you kind of quirk, you know, this sort of thing. Like when people talk, just click, 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 click. I says, and because you can do that and you can disjoint your body, I said, you've got to make a very slow tempo. Your walk to the ring must be very slow, methodic. You've got to gain eye contact with people. You've got to investigate them like you've never seen this person before and they're an alien thing. You know, and as soon as someone gets you, you know, you should open your eyes really wide and you come into them and you, 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 you know, but you never speak. I said, there's the mysticism of it. I said, so, you know, eventually when you do open your mouth and all the blood drips out of it, you become that horror movie thing that people can associate with. I think it's everybody has seen that, Japanese horror movie ilk because it was so big in the late 90s early 2000s it was all about the ring and the grudge and all of this sort of stuff even the photograph with the you know the girl that was on his back and everything it was all the same character so she goes right okay and um Lexi at the time um and the guys from Shine had the storyline with with me and her and we asked if we could incorporate this so at the at the end of the, the first match between me and her you see me go over to the ring and whisper 
something in her ear. It was the transition. So the next time she came out, she came out with the face paint and then the hair and then it was the white gown. And then before you knew it, over a period of four matches, Sue Young was born. But I had to kill her, so I hung her. So I hung the bride, so I killed Sue. But to make her become the ghost from the movies, we had to resurrect her. So she became the undead bride because I killed her. And she resurrected during the match to beat me. So it proved that Sue Young can't be beaten. So the reason she wears the red wig on her head as Sue Young, the undead bride, is because of me. I am, um, I am the symbol. The red wig is the symbol. I'm, I'm Frankenstein and she is my monster. So it's, you know, sometimes you can see something in somebody and you think, oh, my God. They've got all the attributes to do that. And I know that if they do that, it's going to go go nuts. And the WE released her. You know, she was a generic female wrestler and the WE released her. And then, you know, you, you spend, it took me 18 months to, to develop the backstory and everything for, for the Undead Bride. But it was Sue's um, persistence and love of the gimmick that gave the backstory life. She was the one that decided she was the bride. I said about the white gown. She turned it into a bridal gown. She then put the blood down the front. She then decided, even though she had the samurai makeup, the, the warrior makeup, she then done her own sort of makeup. And then before you knew it, um, she's created this character out of an idea around the back of her fucking show at Shine. Um, and I've got to say I'm extremely proud of her. I'm proud of everything she does. I'm proud of the fact that she's holding three gimmicks down in TNA, which is fucking unheard of for a female. I mean. Doing three completely separate fucking gimmicks. Like, what the hell is the talent in this girl? I yeah. mean, usually people transition for one because they can't find their space. She's doing three. And yeah. she's doing them really well. And all three are believable because that's how, that's how good that girl is as a worker, as an actress, and as a wrestler. She believes in every single one. And every single one has got their own identity. And she's given them all quips and uh, uh, repetitions so that people can understand which character she's in, by the voice, by the tempo, by the, by the way she moves, by the clothes she wears. Every single character that that girl does is a separate entity. And, you know, you see that. You see that in girls. And, and I wish there was many more Sue Youngs out there because that girl was a gift. And I'm surprised that nobody else saw what a gift that girl was. Because she is uh, extraordinary. And I believe one of the most versatile female wrestlers out there at the moment. I mean, fuck me, three gimmicks on a on a on one yeah. of the main stages in in the world of wrestling. I mean, at the minute it's AEW, Impact, WWE. She's holding three gimmicks in Impact. Yeah. Like how how I believe that that's I mean, mankind done that. But if yeah, you look, I was about to say they that. were all based. They were all based loosely. Like Dude Love was was all jolly, and then you had Cactus Jack. And then you had mankind. So, so they were all. One was happy, one was contemplative. Com, can't even say it, contemplative, and the other was evil. So right. he went through emotion to create his characters. Who transitions completely, like completely. It's like she's a different person. She walks differently. She talks differently. In, in when she's so young, she uses the other hand to work. Mm. So you know. I, I, I don't know. I think she's one of the most underrated, even though she's one of the um, globally noticeable females out there. Um, I bet WE are kicking themselves now because, um, to me, she's, uh, she's definitely the one that got away. And I'm surprised that, that somebody didn't pick up on, on her look and her mind and her talent. So she is definitely extraordinarily good. So that was actually my next question. So thank you for that, <laughs> because I knew you brought Sue Young to life. I just didn't know how. So there's the whole explanation. So that yeah, one that of my really... favorite matches was with her, yeah. with her, yeah, yeah. Eva Bates, Jessica Havoc at Shine. Yeah. And I remember, I remember backstage because um, I'd I uh, was doing something or I can't remember what I was doing, and um, the girls had been out and they'd sorted the match out and everything, and they'd sorted it out without me. But in my head, what I was, I'll tell you what I was doing. I was in the venue and I'm going, huh, okay, there's tags here. There's three ways here. There's four ways here. There's main events. There's hardcore. There's a cage match. How are we going to stand out amongst all of this? 
even though the, the names in the match are good, how are we going to be a step apart from everybody else on the show? Because the card was so stacked and so incredible that we needed to do something that rocked the boat completely. So while the girls were out the back to having a little chat, I'm in the venue going, okay, so I could throw someone off there and I could do something there and I can do something there and we could do something there. There's four girls in this thing. If I give them one each, we build up to each stunt. We do a do -si do so that if one of the girl loses bottle, we can always, because I was, I was the one in the do -si do So if you notice in that match, if you look, when Jessica Havoc comes through the ropes onto Lever Bates, the step was then to go up the stairs to do a big, um, to, to do a, a, a big move because we threw Sue Young off the balcony. Um, if Lever bottled, I was actually behind Lever to do -si do in front. So it'd be me that went and done the stunt. So every stunt that was set up on that match was um, I was the dosi -si do partner. So so that the match could flow, I was quite willing to do the balcony, fall down the stairs onto glass. Um, you know, just just do all the crazy shit. Take take the the the, the crazy bumps if need be. Um, but I believed all the girls needed um, needed to showcase what they could do. So. Um, I said to Jessica Habit when we, went, when, we went, when we were outside, I went, look, I really love the fact that all of you girls have sorted out this amazing match, and I think it is amazing, but it ain't going to stand out. So I've got an idea, and they've all turned and looked at me, and they've shook their heads, and they've gone, okay, hit me with it. I said, I haven't told Lexi yet. I haven't told anyone yet, but this is what we're going to do. And I've told them about um, the stairs, the glass on the stairs, the tumble down, the stunt work, the choke slam off the balcony. The um, because we literally um, razor edged uh, 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 what's she called, lever off the balcony after we threw wow. Su Young off, and then um, Havoc punched me, and I took the backward roll down the metal stairs onto glass. And you know, so there was all of this crazy shit, and they're, they're looking at me, they're going, <laughs> Okay, I said, Do you want to do it, girls? Because I mean, I, on, honestly, it will be easy, but we've got to go and do a run through, and we ain't got a lot of time because the punters are coming in in a minute, and we've I've, I need to get this dead right. So Havoc went, uh, do you think we should tell Lexi? I went, let's just sort it out first and then I'll go, but leave Lexi to me. I'll go and have a chat with Lexi. And um, we went went through it and Lexi had heard whisper because one of the girls at the back said that the, the girls are trying lunacy. And um, we, we we was there with Sal and Lexi and the dude that owned, because I'd already spoken to the dude that owned the venue at, at Ebor. And I was saying like, like, mate, I promise you it'll all be safe. I promise you. But is there any chance we can use your venue to do some stunts off? And he's going, if Lexi says yes, I say yes. And uh, I've said to Lexi, well, the colour's drained out of her face. And it's like, how can we guarantee each girl's safety on the actual stunt? And right. it's like, right, okay. Um, well, when it comes to the balcony stuff, if you've got your guys underneath, um, if there's about 15 of them, then the girl is going to be safe. You know, it's just falling backwards off the balcony. She's going to be safe because there's 15 guys underneath. Even if they <laughs> dungy, they're going to, you know, she's going to be safe. And as for Lever, she's going over head first because uh, Sue had to go backwards. So Lever was going head first. So she was going to, she was able, she could tuck and roll and land as a bump on top of the guys. So they were going to catch her. Um, my stunt, there was no nothing anyone can do to, for my safety. I had to make sure I was safe because I was going backwards down a, um, a metal flight of stairs. Um, there was about 22 stairs there and I had to go backwards, roll backwards down and land on the glass. So there was no way of keeping my safety. So I just had to kind of go with the flow. Um, so Lexi just said, he said, she says, if, if I can be there to organize the catching of the stunt, um, she says, I'll let you do it. And I tell you something, we came out of that match um, and the girls were outside and they were all so wrapped up in the adrenaline of the match. Tears were flowing. There was cuddles all around, and uh, we stole that show. We absolutely stole that show, and it was just – I don't want to take anything away from the main event, but if you won with a stacked card, then you have to stand out. And those girls, not one of them bottled. Every single one of them was buzzing. Every single one of them wanted to do it, and they were there for each other. So we were all there, and we'd done it together. So, um, you know, it goes back to your question before. It's what you see in people. Now, I knew those girls could do it. I don't think another four girls I was on with could have done it. But the three girls that was on with me that day in that scenario at that venue, they shone and their, their bottle is insane. So, yeah, it's about, it's about seeing stuff and believing in people.
Yeah, uh, still talking about Sue, you actually had a match with her again uh, in Impact. With, with TNA yeah, well, Impact. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, that was such a brutal match. You hung her. Like, you hung her all over again. 15 foot. Yeah, it was yeah. a 15 foot drop. Um, I actually, we actually done the neck and I pushed off the thing and she done the drop into the, into the neck. But obviously, oh I know God. how to do that. I know how yeah. to do that. Everything is fine. Um, when I spoke to the guys um, and they went, so I can see you looking around the venue and it's like, right, okay, um, I'm going to hang her. Is that okay? And he went, um, all he said was, Jules, can you guarantee her safety? And I said, yes. And he went, leave it to you. Um, so they completely trusted me. But the thing was, was that they'd revived Sue and they'd gone away from her gimmick. So I decided I was going to kill her again to make her even more evil than before. So, um, so yeah, I kicked her off a 15-story, a 15-foot building um, with a rope tied around her neck. <laughs> Yeah. And then and then dived myself <laughs> just just to add a flair, you know. I I, I I was totally indie after that because I I jumped off a fucking building. So <laughs> so my my status as a as a toe to toe flipping fighter went out the window as soon as I flew. <laughs> yeah, I I remember watching it like I was like this match is insane, and then as it kept going, I'm like this is even more insane, and then I'm like watching it like this, and I'm like oh my god. <laughs> It was when, when we put the ladder, because we found a ladder that was long enough to go up onto the roof, and I've tied the rope around Sue's neck, and I've grabbed it over my shoulder, and I'm walking up the ladder, and Sue is being yeah. dragged by her throat in a, in a hangman's noose up the flipping <laughs> stairs, and then everyone's going, she ain't going to do it. She ain't going to do it. Fuck, she did she, it. <laughs> fuck, she's done it. Yeah. Fuck, Sue's dead. Sue's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were all like that watching it too. I'm like, that's mama yeah, night for it's, you. It's yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, all like, oh my God. it's all safe. It's all safe. I've had girls what? where I've walked into buildings and they've gone, yeah, I'm not wrestling her. <laughs> it's like, fuck, girl, girl you won't come, you out, with come out with a bruise on you. You, you, you might end up, you know, you, like you with hair doing this. Like with <laughs> I tell you what, it could be worse. It could be you and Jazz fighting two young girls. Oh that would God. be crazy. Oh I had an amazing <laughs> match with Jazz, one of my favorites, and that was at Shine. Oh, okay. it was just, I loved it. And it was a hardcore, and we beat the living shit out of each other. It was just <laughs> wonderful. And, it, like, um, because at the time we were both smokers, and all the girls are out there, they're doing push-ups. You know, and they're, they're, they're running on the spot and they're all getting limboed up and you've got some girl doing yoga in the corner and there's me and, me and Jazz going, how you doing then, girl? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> well, what are we doing? What are we doing? Well, let's just do it in there. Yeah, all right. Good warm-up? Yeah, great warm-up. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that, was, that was literally the, um, the, the match that we'd done. My eyelash has fallen off. Yeah, that, that was how we arranged our match and the rest of it was like... Let's just go with just the flow. Go, go with it. Let's, yeah, that, that's let's, usually the best matches. Yeah, let's just go out there and hit each other and see what yeah. happens. On the so. fly stuff. Usually the best matches. Ah, love it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. So uh, I wanted to talk about Bellatrix. Bellatrix was like a, uh, it was like a show. And then it turned into like a women's organization. Like that's how, is that how that happened? Um, right. We had the World Association of Women's Wrestling. Um, right. And uh, it was a, it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? W W W W. World Association of Women's Wrestling. It's like <laughs> fuck. Seriously. And it was like whoa, whoa. That was it's like no, I, I got to rebrand this shit. I can't say. So who are you from? I work for the World Association of Women's Wrestling. Like what the fuck? <laughs> so it's like it's like no, I can't. So um, I decided. Uh, I looked on the internet to find out what the Latin word, because I love Latin, a uh, Latin word for female warrior, and it was Bellatrix, Bellator being the man and Bellatrix being the woman. Right. And I thought, oh, Bellatrix, oh, Bellatrix is strange. She's a feisty little fucker. <laughs> right, that would be great. I'm going to call it Bellatrix. So we were Bellatrix female warriors, um, and that's where the name was born. Um, and it was a rebrand from the WAWW days. Um, okay. But what, the, way that I, the way that I'd done it was um, I love theatrics. I love the acting part. I love, um, like, my Sigma Angelics became um, a story, a theater production at the end with the match being the crescendo. Um, and then there was always, like, after the match, there'd be another point. So there was a lead on to the next match. So, you know, we'd have, I mean, I bought all the gear. 
all the angelics gear, their big wings and their tiaras and, and all the um, the masquerades, which were the, the, the girls that had the um, the diamond dresses. I mean, those dresses was 250 pounds a piece. And I had 10. I had 10 girls um, and they were all there in their wigs and their, oh, God, the whole thing. So I just wanted a production so that when people went home, um, I wanted them to be terrified. I wanted them to be um, like weirded out. So I bring I am like the, the the Sigma guys. What I do is um, the cast of Sigma was sixty people. Uh, the cast of Angelics was twenty two. The sixty people would they would be zombies, um, demons, um, you know, mummies. All of these, all of these weird and wonderful and spooky characters. Um, but the best, uh, the best uh, entrance I think I'd done was um, people started to understand that there was always something that was going to happen. So the lights went down, the air conditioning blew out cold. So everyone started to do this. So it was like a 4D experience. And um, you'd get like the heartbeat coming in. So people would, with their pulses would already be starting because they knew something was going to happen because I'd fucked them up two or three times before. Um, but then we had the guys come out. We had the, the demon come out and he'd bang his cane and then these other demons would come out and then the coffin would be brought out. Then the cane would go and then there would be zombies that would come out from underneath the ring and go over the barriers and start kind of leering at the, the, the punters in the crowd. Well, this one time, because I'd done that once before, I wanted to step it up a gear. And what they didn't realize is that I'd employed another 20 people and bought another 20 sets of zombie gear. And uh, because we had the um, the seats, you know, like the um, what they call them, the stadium style seats. Yeah. What I'd done was once we had, once everyone was on the stage and then we had the mummy and the mummy's casket was opened and the mummy fell out. And then we had all the little demons and everything running about. And then the cane was gone and the zombies came out from underneath the stage and there was smoke machines and there was fire going up. And there was, you know, like there was like a um, big flame shooting from everywhere. And then it got struck again. And all the zombies came over the top of the stage and things they climbed up and they crawled down and a lot of the guys were gymnasts so they flicked over backwards like the exorcist in crabs and went backwards down the stairs and wow. went amongst the crowd we had women and men jumping up diving off the stairs and running trying to run away from you know screaming <laughs> oh my fucking god there was kids crying there was women screaming there was men shouting there was people running to the fire doors but what they didn't realize that as soon as the fire door was open there were zombies there so they were encaged in the venue and there was nothing they could do about it but then like the lights went down and like you could hear people just like there was these like sobs where people, people were crying, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm I'm backstage through the curtain. I figured this is fucking great. Oh, this is great. <laughs> but then obviously the mood changed and the light went up, and there was like this blue and silver hue, and the angelics come out because it was Zaya Brookside and Erin Angel. So we had all these little girls in in diamond tutus with crowns, and they were all like six and seven years old, and they had these um, glitter and everything, and they were so cute. And everyone had gone from fear. To, oh, in about <laughs> two seconds. So they didn't know by the time the match went on, not one person in the audience know which way they are sung. <laughs> so to me, it was an experience. And people, well, I had people outside the venue listening to what people were saying as they were left because it's the best sort of feedback is when people don't know that you're listening in. So I'd have people outside the venue just listening, you know, having a coffee in the coffee room and everything and, and being outside. And all they would say is like, oh, my fucking God, I've got to come back and see that Sigma Angelic thing again. I, I, that that terrifying. I've got to tell my mate. I, 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 like, I'm definitely getting the laugh. I'm bringing my mum next time. She'd fucking love that. And the <laughs> feedback and the gabble from, from just doing that production was like, we got it. We got it. We've now got something that's going to put Bellatrix on the map because of the production. Because it didn't matter what, what main event there was. It didn't matter what belt was being gone for. The Sigma Angelic thing at the end was always what rounded up the show. So people would, would be there, they'd cheer the girls on and they'd be there for all the matches. But what they were really sat there for was what was going to happen to the Angelics? What was happening next? How was it going to go? I mean, we I made two angels disappear right in front of people. Right in front of people. One minute they were there, then they got attacked by zombies. And then all that was left was two pairs of wrestling boots in the middle of the ring. And wow. two pearls. And it was done. And everyone was like, 
<laughs> how did that happen? How how did that happen? Right. And they didn't realize, but by the time the girls got attacked, the girls were already out of the building. <laughs> wow. So it was it was all day. It was all day. Practice, practice, practice until the timing was right. But yeah, by the time that the zombies were invaded, the girls were already gone, already finished. It was that they were already out of the way. And all the guys were doing was placing the boots in the ring. So it was, you know, that to me makes my, you know, it's a spectacle. It's uh, something to talk about. It's like, what the fuck have I just watched? And that's that's the theatrics with the Sue Young. It's very Sue Young. It's, you know, right. you get people that can do this shit. And all of my guys, every single one of them can do it. So it's quite awesome. So speaking of your guys, you know, like uh, just in your family, you know, like Pages in WWE, Zach's helped, uh, you know, with wrestling, uh, training people to wrestle and stuff like that. And then you also have WAW and Bellatrix and you train all these people. Uh, and we talk about like you're like, you know, proud mom and night and everything. Uh, you know, you have people at your house. They stay at your house. You, you know, feed them and stuff like that. But uh, like Kip Saban is in AEW, so like, and he came from uh, WAW. So how proud of you? It's my boy. How proud are you of him? Because they actually um, they even mentioned it too. Like W, he comes from WAW in Norwich. Like they actually said yeah. that on AEW. But any any um any interview Kip will do, he'll turn around and and say that I'm his trainer and his mentor. Um, it's he's just a wonderful kid, and I remember first training school I had with him and uh, he was a backyarder and I'm not very good with backyarders I've got I've got to admit um you know I'm, <laughs> I'm quite old school that way and he came in and you know I said to him don't run before you can walk can you please only do the stuff that I've taught you because what you think you know and what I know you know is two completely different things and I've got to make sure it's not about what you can do it's about the safety of the person that you're on with and I was adamant that I wanted him to stop doing all this crazy shit that he'd done in his back garden. And it was, you know, if you want to do that stuff, let me teach you how to do it right. Let me make sure that your opponent is always safe. And um, it's the first training school in, in the afternoon. I um, He kind of came in and he'd done a match and he put all of this backyard shit and I went loony <laughs> No. I, I pulled him out of that fucking ring and I just dressed him down. You know, I told him three or four times during the day, please forget everything that you think you've learned up until now and take this for what it is because we want to teach you the right way. We want to make sure that you're competent and you've got talent. So please, you know, I'd already done a four hour training session with him as an, on an outside show. Um, so I'd met him on an outside show and brought him into the company. And, uh, you know, all the time is because he's quite a cocky little lad and everything with his little emo haircut and everything. So, um, you know, he thought that, you know, he, he thought he knew better and it very nearly really nearly went bad and and i was so fucking angry that it nearly cost his opponent a a, a injury but oh fuck i did you know he'll probably speak out against me because i fucking went mad um and i i blew my stack and my temper did get the better of me and i did i dressed him down and and i said to him i went you ain't paid your subject you ain't paid your fees it, it, this was on the Saturday. I went, if you turn up tomorrow, then I'll fucking respect you and I will teach you. I said, but if you don't, then, you know, fair enough. Go go elsewhere. You know, I, I can't have someone that won't fucking listen when when it's um, it's important about safety. And I, I mean, you can imagine it's fuck, 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 you're a cunt. So you can imagine the way that I was saying it. I mean, it's not nice and nice the way I'm saying it now. I fucking dressed the boy down. Right. <laughs> Next morning, nine o'clock on the dot. That boy walked in, came straight up to me, apologized, gave me his subs and said, from this point onwards, I'll listen to you. And I'm really sorry. And I tell you something, from that point onwards, that boy did. And he was one of the, my favorite people that I have ever taught. It, wonderful, amazing, talented, respectful, wonderful child. And um, I'm, I'm watching him very closely because I'm extremely proud of him. Yeah, uh, you got to do that tough love sometimes. Oh, mate, I tore his arsehole out. <laughs> that was more than tough it. Love, it was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, really, I mean, like, I saw it OTT. I really went OTT. Um, you know, but but he took it on the chin and, and he came back and it was just lovely. It was just, you know, he's just, he's just a lovely, thoughtful, wonderful boy. And, you know, I've got a lot of time for Kit. A lot of time. Yeah, uh, I was kind of like a proud 
person, you know, proud fan too. And they were like, you know, Kip's from, you know, WAW in Norwich. I was like, yay. You know, they mentioned the Knight family. You know, Jim Ross was saying that on TV. And yeah, oh, he's Jim doing Ross, really well. Jim Ross. <laughs> yeah, old Jim. So, uh, speaking of WAW, you actually have a performance center now. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we do. We've just got all our licenses as well. So we're licensed to do all sorts of fighting, boxing, MMA, um, you know, like everything. We're licensed for alcohol. We're licensed as a venue for doing theatre. Um, I've always wanted to do pantomimes. So I'm going to get all my wrestlers involved in um, kids' pantomimes. Um, and we're going to do, um, like, get the special needs kids come in. So we do, um, in a, on a Sunday afternoon, we're going to do a free show for the special needs kids. So the kids that don't usually get to go to do a pantomime, we're going to do that. So... I mean, like any other time, you can fucking pay. <laughs> on, a Sunday, on a Sunday afternoon, we're going to bring the, the special needs kids in and do a, a show purposely for them. Because we do a wrestling show for them now. Um, we do three a year for them. Um, and we go over to their little base and we put our ring up and, you know, like we go over there and kind of do it. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. You see the little Harlequin girls and, you know, they're, oh, it, it just it just tugs at your heartstrings. So. Yeah, my favourite three shows of a year are, are working in front of the the disability kids. That's awesome. And then some other stuff some people might not know. Uh, you have a t-shirt company. Yes, you make, yes. You make t-shirts. Yes, we do. And they're very, very good quality. I'm just letting you know. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, we, we've got Oibird. I mean, it, it's doing really well. I mean, I, I was um, working today. I've, uh, I've just had a big contract come in. So I've got to make some t-shirts for a, a pub just around the corner awesome. so they didn't know who he was so it's like really cool because it's a uh, work that's coming via facebook so it's um it's quite nice it's quite nice i've got a nice little diary full for next week of graphic design <laughs> i've got to do and so yeah it's, it's just nice it's it's fingers in many pies i mean at one stage or another the money's got to start coming in right yes yeah. <laughs> one stage or another <laughs> So another thing besides Twitch, um, you're actually, which another people, uh, people might not even, they're going to be like, what? When I say this, you are a reverend. You can yes. have, you can marry people and you do funerals and everything. And yeah, like people will not believe me, but and marriage. <laughs> yes, yes. In the USA <laughs> and in the UK, I am, I am a reverend. So um, I am a holy knight. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you, uh, when when you're doing marriages and stuff, do you, like, tell the groom, like, you know, you better behave or I'm a cunt, punt, cunt, cunt, punt you? Well, to be honest, I mean, I, I mean, I, I haven't yet, I haven't yet done one. Um, I've been asked to do one, but I've, I was thinking, like, how am I going to do this? And I thought, right, okay, so there's a, there's, you know, like, there's all the, the pious stuff. Well, they can go anywhere and do that. But, you know, like, get married in a wrestling ring, all I've got to do is, like, right, mate. Are you going to fuck this bird for the rest of your life? Yeah? No? Okay. What about you? Are you going to suck his dick for the rest of your life? Yeah? Okay. Now pronounce your mind and wife. Go and kiss the bride. Let's have a piss up. Go and have a shag. Make sure you consummate. Over and done with. Let's go get drunk. That's awesome. I think, I think I'm going to be the best reverend ever. <laughs> if I get married, I'll you want you to marry me. For rockstar spuds I will totally later. do it. Totally do. I'll be the best reverend ever. I'll be the best reverend ever. You would have. You should have done rock star Spud Zone wedding to Renee Michelle. That would have been something. I would have won that twenty four seven title. I know that fucking much. Yes, definitely. Well, I know Rob's chomping at the bit. I'm like taking all his time, but uh, that's. I know we've been on two hours. It's like. Bit. So that's pretty much all the questions I have. I uh, just want to say thank you tremendously for coming on the show. Can't thank you enough. And, you know, I love oh, you too, bitch. Oh, shucks. <laughs> love you, bitch, Mama Knight. <laughs> it, this is all your fault, Kathy. Yeah, I know. All your fault. Shucks. <laughs> <laughs> I got, like, right. one of the most popular people on the planet, like, in wrestling, shucks. I got her on our, our podcast. It's Darn all it. my fault. <laughs> I will definitely take it. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get, I'm just going to plug my computer in because if not, I'm not going to be able to speak to Rob because he, my, oh my God, my dog, my dog is trying mm. to shag my leg now. Uh -oh. <laughs> what the hell is going stop on? Stop it, Nikki, stop it. <laughs> See, we I know, call that Mississippi I know. Nikki, leg stop. <laughs> It's something, mate. It's Randy as hell. Oh, man. Right. 
So right, okay, we're good. Say, we're good. God God bless you for coming on the show. You know, thank you for it being all my fault. And uh we'll turn it over to Rob now. I know he's chomping at the bit. <laughs> yes, bless him. He's been waiting so patiently. That's I know right, he's right. he's a saint. He's a saint. <laughs> Uh, he's been listening right. intently. I mean, there's been a yeah. couple of times where it's kind of gone like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's going to be edited out. <laughs> there you go. No, none of this gets nope, edited nope. out. Like, yeah. this is live. This is yeah, happening good right go. now. Good. <laughs> good. Good. I'm glad. Good. <laughs> that's right. All right, Rob, take it away. All right, sweet. Thank you, Kathy. So, uh, what's going on, Mama Knight, Ma Dukes? How are you doing? How are you I'm doing, so... you young looking thing, you? You're putting oh, me you to know, shame, yeah, hey. whatever's going on. <laughs> Uh, you know, he spiked, and, you know, he spiked his hair for you today too. You, oh, I had to. You I had to. Hat. I yeah. had to. I had to. You were coming on the show. You know, I got uh, at noon. I got up before the crack of noon. I, you know, I got all pretty up. Oh, I, mean, I had to. Look at looking to. all suave. Oh yeah, I, I had to. I had to. You know, what I mean, it was one. Yeah, you're looking great. I'm, I'm loving the background. I mean, the back to oh, the well, future and, and old Arnie in the background. It's like, oh, look at him go. Oh, yeah, that's like, oh yeah, that's like my favorite movie right there. You know, what I mean, I, how can a robot make me cry? You know, what I mean, at the end of that movie, I was crying like, oh man. <laughs> Mate, seriously, I was like crying out the other day. I had a bit of a whimper, and it was like, oh my god, what a tart. I can't <laughs> even think what it was, and. I can't think what it was. It was something really stupid. And I'm, I'm sat there going, it's the menopause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was the change, man. So, you know, sometimes that happens. You know, my mom, they had my mom too. <laughs> my mom would do that. Mate, I was there. on Twitch last night and I sneezed and peed my pants. It's like, what the hell oh, is it? What is, this? what is my life? Oh, what is man. my life? It yeah, was like, sucks. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, well, at least you were home. At least you were home, you know what I mean, so. <laughs> yeah, thank fuck for that. I can you imagine if I was That's driving right. back from a job? Woo! Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you need to kind of cross the legs and sneeze. It's like, you know, it's that <laughs> age. That's right. That's right. So, uh, look, I'm so glad you got to come on here and all. And I, I was uh, glad to listen to all your stories, you talking, you know, the whole time. You know, I was just, if you were going to war right now, I live in Delaware. I would literally swim across the Atlantic to come over there and help battle, you know, go to battle for you. That's how, you know, you have to talk about. I think I might even As long as there's a roast day. dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah As yeah, long yeah. as there's a roast dinner at the end of it. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Operation Fat Rob, you know what I mean? I've been on that for like 20 <laughs> years, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm definitely trying to gain weight. So, you know, hey, yeah, I'm all for roast. Mate, I, roast I put on six stone. Six <laughs> mm. stone. Like mm. COVID tits, I have gone from Ooh. a very live athletic seven stone to 13 fucking stone. Whatever Ooh. is going on, I put on a person. Mm. And like my, my husband thinks it's great, but my boobs are huge. <laughs> like massive. <laughs> well, hey, 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 nothing wrong with that. I guess your husband, you know, hey, yeah. <laughs> making him happy. No, he likes that. them. There you he go. He does. There you go. That's right. Yeah, and I am got, got, glad to see you got your shot, too. You know, I uh, got mine two weeks ago, so today is my day. Uh, I should be good to go. You know, I'm vaccine and all. You know, I was happy to get that, I've got that one tip. more to go. So in the next two weeks, I'll get my second. I've had my first, um, uh, so I'm, I'm about to get my second. And then, ah, the world opens up for us. It means I can mm -hmm. travel aboard because I've got, I've got my little certificate. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, looking definitely looking forward to just going back to normality now. That's right. Yeah, I, when I did mine, it was a little drive through. I was right in my car and all. You know, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, you know, I bent over. I dropped my I dropped my pants and was like, yeah, here. Like, no, 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 just right in your arm. I'm like, okay. It okay. goes in your arm, dude. Yeah, yeah it goes like, in my arm. So yeah. no one's gonna put a prick in me ass, no? Okay, yeah. come on, there's my arm. <laughs> it's not like when I go into the bank and they're like, "Oh, you forgot your ID? Spread your cheeks, lift your sack." All right, okay, now we know who you are. Mister. All right, now Cough. we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> now we know who you are. All right. Oh, Bless man. you, You're man That's after right. my own heart. <laughs> hey, no problem. Oh, I do love your hair, though. Yeah, I did want to say that your hair. Looks oh, so thank awesome. you. I love it. I love that color and all. That was oh man, you know it was awesome. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I do got say yeah, that. I've changed it slightly. I've changed it. I've gone lighter, just a very a, a more okay. light red. So this is fire. I was on. I had I was pillar box for oh, fifteen years. Um, but mm. as you get older, the darker <laughs> hair, the more it kind of draws you out. So I thought, oh, fuck it. There's no way that I can do, um, I can't not be red. So I thought I'll step down and go red-orange instead of red-pink. So when this goes down, it goes down to an orangey red rather than okay. a pink red. And, um, yeah, it's doing everything that I expected it to do. And um, I cut my old fringe in. I gave myself a haircut the other day. So hides the wrinkles in my forehead. 
So <laughs> anything. All the tricks of the trade to look younger, isn't go. it? There you go. <laughs> you can't you see go. the pegs keeping my ears back, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. That's right. That's right. So, so, thank uh, you. Thank you. I'm really, really chuffed about the hair. Oh, yeah, no problem. And uh, it is crazy. Uh, you're, uh, you know, ordained minister and stuff, too, because I am, too. I actually celebrated my 10-year anniversary. Like, a couple of days, they gave me an email. I forgot all about it. You know, like, 10 years? Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, did you do yours married. on the internet? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I did. I, I had nothing better to me do. Me too. I was like, you know what? Let me be a let me be a minister. You know, what I mean, I want to check this out. You know, what I mean, so yeah, I can do. Uh, I haven't done any funerals or anything. You know, I'm not real religious, so I don't know what to say. So if I did, no, am I? I just say, thought it was great because yeah, I can so have I, rev after my name. Yeah, that's right. So if I ever did a wedding, I'd probably say the same thing as you. You know, what I mean, hey, y'all want to shake? I would be forever, the you know? best. <laughs> yeah, mate. Do you think you can eat this pussy for the rest of your life? There you go. There you okay, go. I pronounce you man yep. and wife. That's right. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, you've done it this far, so you know, might as well go. <laughs> you might as well keep going. <laughs> stay safe. Stay true. Stay local. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Always keep a salty yeah. diet. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> This is officially the Attitude Era episode of Ray Sight <laughs> Sight. Hey, we, we put the hey, point mate, you're never going to top this one. When I said on Twitter, I was like, do not bring your virgin ears to this podcast. That's right. We put Look, the I tried. On the, there. First, the first 30 minutes, I didn't say fuck. All right? That's right. So you I think well. I did really well. well. Yeah, you did well. I, I, I really tried. And in the end, it's like, do you know what? I can't keep this shit up. Yeah. yeah, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Now, I do want to ask, you know, uh, all this that we were talking about wrestling stuff, I want to, you know, uh, I do want to ask, I found something out about you. You got to play a stunt woman in Alice in Wonderland. Well, it wasn't really a yes. stunt woman, a stunt prostitute. <laughs> you were a stunt yes. prostitute. I was so, a stunt prostitute. I fell out the back <laughs> of a fuck truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. True story. Me and my daughter, um, we were, we would, it was Danny Dyer's film. Um, there was a lot of other like famous people, but obviously Danny Dyer at the time was, was a, a big name over here. And it's called Malice in Wonderland. Um, they turned it into uh, drug dealers and, um, you know, the white rabbit was a cocaine dealer and um, they had his little gang. Um, and then you uh, like the queen was, um, it was actually a king. Um, and Danny, Danny Dyer was, was the white rabbit. So you had the, yeah, the, the queen of hearts and then the white rabbit. And then, oh, it was just fucking insane. And I remember when they, they came to us and they said, look, you know, uh, we're filming in Norwich. We're filming in Norwich and Great Yarmouth. Um, have you got any of your wrestlers that would, uh, would like to be, um, like acting as extras? Uh, so like my husband, yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, so my, they, my husband went for it and my two sons. So they were part of the king of hearts. Um, drug gang so um there was like my, yeah Roy Zach and Rick and then they turned around and said they were looking for two um stunt women and they didn't want to pay the stunt prices um but you know because we bump and we are professional wrestlers would me and my daughter be stunt women so we went yeah fuck that we'll jump into anything don't worry about that and they went well what's our part well you're going to be prostitutes okay no worries do we get to wear fishnets like cute little outfits yeah, you you can wear kind of like next to nothing, and like Raya looked great. I mean, she <laughs> carried that corset off. I mean, little tiny because she had the little tiny side hat, the um, uh, the what's he called? Oh, Mad Hatter. She had the little Mad yeah. Hat hat. Uh, and then they turned around and said, "So, what's it you want us to do?" Well, what we want to do is we want we uh, uh the girl Maggie is going to nick the truck. That is a fuck truck after one of the prostitutes has killed a, a punter in the back by stoving his head in with a television set. <laughs> okay, you got me up to now? Yeah. So, the, the, the dude gets his head stoved in with a television set and me and Raya are touted for business on each of the corner of the back of the truck and the other girls are on the settee. And then all of a sudden, the truck gets nicked and it jerks forward and me and her have got to fly unladylike out the back um <laughs> so uh the way that they wanted it because uh, with stunt women it, that they put two days aside they put 48 hours aside for this this stunt so me and raya uh we've done the first one and we've done it as a wrestling bump and they went no nah, it's too clean you're actually meant to be falling out of a fuck truck into a road you know you know dying from it so we've gone like okay not a problem so the next time We've done it. We flung ourselves out. There's fucking arms and legs akimbo. The fucking legs spread. The fucking works. That's the one. 
that's the take. <laughs> so instead of going for 48 hours and earning shit loads of money, we've done it in two fucking takes, didn't we? <laughs> so, so yeah, but, but no one can ever take it away from us that we were two stump prostitutes falling out the back of a fuck truck after a John had had his head stoved in with a telly by a brass, by a prostitute. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you never thought something would be like that. You know, you did come across something like that in your life, huh? You know, wrestling and all, you know, uh, stunt prostitute. Mate, I've been in, I've been in a pop, mo- uh, pop video and I Ooh. was a dominatrix. Um, the song is called Molly and I was, I was Ooh. Molly. And I'm going to check that out. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, by, it's a song called Molly by the band Carrie. Um, and the, the lead guitarist was the, was the lead guitarist out of In Excess. So um, he then okay. kind of went on to form this this band, Carrie. And I am the female wrestler that's beating the fuck out the lead singer. Um, and <laughs> if you listen to the words, it's actually about a woman dominatrix that he falls in love with. And Molly hits like a boy. And, and you see me <laughs> kicking the fuck out of him and kneeling him in the bollocks. A lot. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Kind of like your wrestling matches or whatever, you know what I mean? Because if it was just like me, wrestling. Oh, if anybody asked me to describe your wrestling matches, violent. <laughs> you wake up in the morning on show day and choose violence. That's what you do. <laughs> right. I think the best one is when the girls in the shimmer locker room they go over to see who they're on with, and and you can see them going down. And you see them go, and you think, right, okay, I'm on with her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the shoulder is like, and and like all the other girls will turn around and go, look, don't worry. And, and don't panic because two minutes before you're due to go out, she'll bang a load of stuff into it and it will all be in storyline. Just follow her. You'll know everything that's going on. You won't worry about it. You won't feel a thing. Everything will be all right. Don't worry. But you can see them kind of walk around in the days and all the other girls are kind of going through their matches for like two or three hours. And there's the girl that <laughs> I'm on with having a cup of tea at the bar, not knowing which, which day of the week it is. <laughs> so you, can, you, you always knew my opponents at Shimmer because they've done fuck all. <laughs> they've done <right>. nothing. <laughs> that's right. Oh man! So I do like how you got your name. I heard a story about how you got your name. You know, you were in a mosh pit or something, and you thought, yes, you know, I was moshing. Uh, yeah, yeah, over there just tearing <laughs> people up. You know, what I mean, and then you misheard the name Slayer. I think is that what happened? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I was wrecked. I was stoned out of my mind. I I'd been on drugs. I had I had fucking drank. I mean, I'm not a drinker. I'm a white lightweight. So I think I'd had half a shandy and a fucking. Um, a, a pill of some sort and I was off my fucking nut and I was just moshing in the pit and I remember being very sweaty and I had a bit of a flipping black eye and all I remember is that I was saying fuck that was a great tune fuck that was great <laughs> and I hear and that was the latest tune by Slayer and I thought Slayer wow what a great name if I have a daughter <laughs> I'm going to call her Slayer and I actually remember the thought process and I've gone over to my mate and I'm still fucking wobbling about because obviously I'm fucking out my tree and uh, and I went I thought my daughter's name. If I have a little girl, I'm going to call her Soraya. Fucking hell yeah. And that was it. Off I went again, like some mad fucking crazy dude fucking going down the bar, arms and legs like something out of home and alone, shouted to her when I was going to have a little girl called Soraya. And all along, it was Slayer. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mate, oh, man. Drink and drugs. Don't do it. But if you do do it, remember the names. Because <laughs> right. you can call your kids awesome names. That's right. That's right. I'm so yeah, glad you, it wasn't you... a song by Meatloaf. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Paige was gonna be Slayer instead of Soraya. She been like Slayer. Her, name, her name would have been Slayer. Come here, Slayer. Mate, 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 I just, mate, yeah, I just, yeah, fucking, I just fucking misheard it. Misheard it. Uh, you can't Kathy, look. I was fucking wrecked. Fucking wrecked. Kathy, please don't call the girl Slayer because if she kicks your ass, I can't help you. And I don't. She's we we don't cover. Supposed, we don't cover ass kicking here inside society. Me and Ray are gonna fight. Ray are gonna fight. This is already planned. This is already planned. Oh, You're gonna fight in oh, Target man. and in the parking lot. In the parking lot. <sighs> <laughs> I'll fight you, Kathy. I'll fight you, Kathy. You, you don't know what this girl puts us through. She has to be kicking her in the shins, kicking her arms. <laughs> You're gonna cost us money. You know what? Go ahead. Ray, hey, Ray, Ray is also <laughs> Ray, Ray is supposed to put me in the PTO too. So there's that too. I'm just warning you. You know, we're gonna get it. we're gonna get in a fight in Target, and then she's gonna put me. I'll in kick you in the cup. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Mate, I, I know a hundred different ways to do that ways. shit. So <laughs> I was watching the matches, and I I, I know <laughs> I seen you do that. <laughs> yeah, Mama Knight's gonna cunt punt me. That's what I call it, the cunt punt. <laughs> that's, right. that's it. Yeah, that that's the um, that's the drop kick. That's the, yep. the long jump because I, I can't drop kick. But I, I can I used to do long jump and high jump and, and run for England. So I'm very, very good at that shit. So I thought, well, if I can't fucking drop kick, I can long jump. So uh so that's where that came in. 
That's cool. I'm, glad Kathy, the funny. It's awesome. I'm glad Kathy said the name for that because I couldn't. You know, my mom watches the show sometimes. And that's one of the words. If I say the C word, uh, she, I'm grown. <laughs> she'd be like, hey, come here. I, I did say, not raise you to say that word. <laughs> say can't. Can't. Because yeah, it makes you sound from London. Can't. I can't. That's right. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, she, yeah. They, my parents were like, yeah, they didn't, you know, give it. You know, they didn't give a damn if I cussed or anything, you know, when I was younger. But yeah, if I say that word, woo. <laughs> Mate, I tell you, it's worse to say slut here. Like, cunt oh, is okay. just like fuck. It's just like, yeah. like, how you doing, you cunt? And what's up, you cunt? And uh, so yeah. it's a it's a term of endearment over here. Um, yeah. Like fuck and and yeah. kiss. Um, you know, calling someone a slut um, is worse because we even turn around and go, hey, doing this slag. So even that isn't a mess about, but we do use a lot of cuss words in our in our language as a as a whole. It's just how it is. Yeah. Um, but if you turn around and go like like fuck off, you slut, that to me is worse than you turn around and saying to me, "All right, you gun," because <laughs> to me it, it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It's a it's just a yeah. a part of where you live. It's how much you use it. But most of the UK uses it in in everyday speak. But um, but slut is bad over here. That, that's not a nice word. And obviously, the normal derogatory terms that are universal aren't good here. But but the yeah. Brits do like the word cunt, I'm afraid. And April yeah. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Now, do you say Bob's your uncle? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, if you're going down the street, you know, just take make a right, you know, uh, the house is over there, Bob's your uncle. Well, it's actually Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Okay. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. So, um, okay. I mean, we don't, we don't usually, we don't usually say that, but you know, sometimes you'll, you know, as a laugh, you'll turn around and, and someone will go, yeah, you go down there and Bob's your uncle. Yep. And Fanny's your aunt. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like saying, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? It's like, it's the same sort of thing. So. Okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I love I love hearing the uh you know the the English slang you know even though I talk English as American English I love the Queen's English I love hearing y'all talk you know mate you guys the amount of times when I was smoking and I would go outside and I go hey girls I'm just nipping out for a fag and they'd go and I'm like what the fuck did I say what the fuck did I say I don't get it I don't I don't know what and they're going you can't say that shit here and I'm like. What? I'm, I'm going out for a ciggy. I don't get it. Did, did you want a fag? No, you can't say that shit here. <laughs> That's really bad over here. You can get us killed over here. Oh, fuck off. It's a cigarette. Not over here, it's not. <laughs> so, so the amount of times I used to get in shit for that. But, you know, I can't help it. It's the slang. So when you guys say pants, well, that's our underwear. So when you go, yeah. like, I've got no pants on, we think your willy's flashing. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, okay, like, there's definitely some sort of fucking weirdo shit going on here, because we have got no fucking clue what you've just said. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because I, I, I've had, a, had that happen to me before. I remember when I first uh, was playing video games, I first got internet and all, I was playing with somebody from England, and they were going to smoke a cigarette, and they said that too, and I was like, what? Uh, you know, I mean, I don't care what you do in your personal life, does you know what I mean? But, you know, no, 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 a cigarette. I forgot you're American. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Mate, we have a food over here um, that are called faggots, and um, we've had to take them off menus because people are offended because mm. they think that it's a derogatory term, but it's actually not. It's a meat sausage food thing that you have with gravy, and it's a very old English dish. But like everyone is kicking off because they said no, no, because it means that no, it really doesn't mean that. It's yeah. a fucking food. It's a food that we had in medieval times. Like what the fuck? Like get over yourself. It's like saying you can't call a crab a crab because you know the crabs that you get round around it, you know, in your pubic hair are going to be offended. It's like seriously, yeah. guys, sort it out. <laughs> you know, That's right. Sort it out. I know people are too you know, sensitive. You know, it's like oh, it's like oh, come on. I remember one time one of my friends was telling me um, I asked what she had for breakfast. And she said she was eating spotted dick. And I was like, look, whatever you do on your personal time, I don't need to know about it. Oh, that's a dessert over here. That's, yeah. that's sponge with currants. That, um, yeah. that, uh, it's it's, it's um, steamed. And it's it's a very heavy pudding, but it is a very old pudding over here. So, yeah, spotted dick. Yeah, that, that is, well, that's one of ours. That's one of ours. We eat, eat dick over here, and we've got to make sure it's spotted. You know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And I also like yeah, bangers and mash. You know, what I mean, what's that sausage and uh, uh, mashed potatoes? Sausage and potato. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I remember that. Yeah, remember there's, what, yep. there's loads. There's there's so many different things. I mean, I remember when I first came over, and I'm thinking like I'm looking at the menu, and I'm thinking like, 
fuck, this, this, I can't believe I'm in America because I don't know shit that's on this menu. I have got no fucking clue what any of this shit means. And, you know, it's spelled one way but pronounced another. And I ain't got a fucking clue. And then I see steak and biscuits. And I'm sitting there thinking, rump steak and rich tea. Hmm. Okay. Um, a weird combination, but, you know, biscuit, not a problem. And then when I get it, I get fucking steak and scones. <laughs> like, what the fuck are these? And it's like, <laughs> It's like these scones with no sugar in it. And I'm like, the fuck am I meant to do with these? They're just bland flour cakes. And then they turn around and they go, did you want gravy on that? I went, oh, yeah, well, that, that might be better. I, you know, I can wet it up a little bit. At least I can, you know, dip the bit in a nice bit of bisco. And it comes out white. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this glue? So now I've got, I've got scones with no sugar in that's been held together with fucking glue. I'm like, like I don't know if I'm going to get on with American or really well. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Now I do know yeah I, I've seen, I, I remember uh, seeing somebody uh, you know uh, there over there in England like oh we got a, a great breakfast and all I took a picture put it on like Twitter or whatever and they had baked beans on there and I was like mm. you know I, I love baked beans you know but I've never had it as breakfast you know I guess y'all have it as breakfast uh, over here it's more of a like a dinner time lunchtime type type of deal yeah but your beans are different your oh, beans it is? are completely different to us yeah yeah it's not the same uh, oh, we okay. we have a very rich tomato sauce with ours whereas uh, yours are kind of like they've got like this manky kind of brownie kind of color shit to them. <laughs> they just don't taste like they just don't taste like what you need, do, what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. You need to go to um to uh, Publix because Publix are great because they do Yorkshire tea bags, which is the best tea that, they, that that's what us Brits drink and it is the best. Um they do Yorkshire tea bags and they also do Bisto gravy and they do Heinz baked beans and and English tomato ketchup, which has not got so much sugar because we're more vinegar based, whereas you guys are more sugar based. So it's got more of a sharpness to it. So it doesn't taste like you're eating sugar in your bread, sugar in your mud, sugar in your milk, sugar, like fucking sugar in everything. Um, <laughs> it's very, yeah, you know, I remember I had a loaf of bread and it's like, fuck me, it's like, this tastes like, it's like sweet cake. It just <laughs> tastes like cake to me. It's like, even your butter's got sugar in it. So what That's the hell right. is this place? Yeah, it's everything's madness. got sugar. You guys love, everything's got sugar or cheese. Yeah, it, cheese, yeah. But it ain't got sugar in it. It's got fucking cheese in it. Mm -hmm. Chicken and cheese yeah. and mince and cheese and sausage mm -hmm. and cheese. It's like, fuck. Seriously, take the cheese out. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you'll go to McDonald's or something and you're like, uh, can I get a Dr. Pepper to drink? And be like, yeah, you want cheese on it? Like, yes, you I want do. cheese? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you want cheese, cheese to go with your sugar? Fuck, That's you know. Right. Do you want nacho cheese? How about nacho cheese? Fuck your nacho cheese. Just give me the fucking <laughs> drink. <laughs> That's right. I want, I want, I want a block of cheese the size of a car battery so I can eat. <laughs> I won't be clogged Man, up. Man, you guys, <laughs> you guys, your your fucking food. Honestly, <laughs> it's. I mean, we get out of go out because we've got no taste in our food, and yet, like, like home cooking over here is is just is so nutritious and so so wonderful. I mean, like when you go, like when you go into restaurants and stuff, you, you we get the same food over here like you get over there. Do you know what I mean? Any restaurant food, it's the same. It's just how it's cooked. Um, but home cooking is different. It's completely different. Just like American home cooking is different to what you can get um, out in restaurants and stuff. Um, and I defy anybody to go into a, into a place and have a roast dinner and then come to someone's house and have a roast dinner and tell me it's the same because it's not. Oh, yeah. It's completely mm -hmm. different. You know, it doesn't even taste the same. My roast dinner doesn't taste like anything out there, like anything. But my, mm -hmm. I, I make it the way my nana made it, you know. So I'm very old-fashioned, very, very old-fashioned. Yeah, because uh... – my mom makes this meatloaf and that's like my favorite thing that she makes uh, and I love it to death, you know, and, and if I have meatloaf anywhere else, no, it does not taste the same. So yeah, it's like just you not said, the same. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not no. the same as mama's mm. meatloaf. Like, so I will turn around to go, Oh, cause she, she loves my food where it does. And you know, like it doesn't matter where I am. When, when she comes home, she comes, mom, can you make me some roast potatoes? I just love the <laughs> roast potatoes. You know, so, so, you know, or a baked potato or to be honest, the, I make some real wicked eggs, like any sort mm. of eggs I can make. I, for some reason, I am a dab hand at making eggs. And mm. she loves fried egg sandwiches. Well, oh, she used nice. to before she went vegan. But she, <laughs> she loved fried egg sandwiches. I mean, she, she won't eat them now, obviously. But um, that was that was her favorite, bless her. Mama, see, the I way think, Mama used to do it. Yeah, see, see, everybody loves Mom's cooking because Mom puts love into cooking. You know what I mean? No, she only does cooking. She puts love in it. Yes. <laughs> love and a lot of salt. That's right. That's right. They, they don't do that in Applebee's. The Applebee's ain't putting no love in there. They're trying to get no. you out now, man. <laughs> yeah, they're working like, man, another person? Come on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> oh, man. 
So you have been so you have been wrestling for like oh, for a long time and stuff. Yeah, you guys seen a lot of changes and stuff. Like what are like the biggest changes you've seen since you're you know from when you started to about now? Um the style. Um, it's completely different now. It's a more gymnastic sort of style. Um, and in my day, it was very um, tit for tat. So um, the, the the face wasn't beaten down to an inch of its life. Um, it was nobody knew who the winner was going to be because like nowadays you can kind of suss it out before the end of the match who's going over. Um, whereas in my day, it was you know, like you start off with a referee's hold and someone would take and then you reverse and then you would reverse and then reverse, reverse, break coming again, reverse, reverse, reverse. Um, and then you get the villain doing the upper hand. If the villain couldn't win, then they'd resolve to cheating. But cheating was only in the latter half of the match. It wasn't a precedent where you come straight in and punch someone in the fucking dick. Um, so, you know, it's uh, like the work has become very blatant and um, there's no such thing as, as shady work anymore. Um, you know, the referee is dropped in the shit a lot. Um, um, I think... It, on the female circuit, the the um, biggest thing is is uh, the girls being taken more seriously. Um, I mean, I've been pretty lucky because I was trained by men and I was brought in the business by men and I predominantly wrestled guys. Um, my style has always been different. It's, it's been the male style within a female world. Um, so I've been kind of lucky and unlucky in, in certain respects that I was always kind of accepted. It's like, oh, Sway and Ice, well, she can wrestle the guys. So... I've always been really lucky in, in, in my my world. Um, but as a whole worldwide, uh, the Japanese were classed as the best in the world. And I don't I no longer believe that that's true. I believe now um, that the Australians are churning out girls um, like no tomorrow. Um, I think America is really doing well, bringing in wrestlers rather than going bikini models. Um, I believe Europe now is a hotbed, whereas before, the girls used to have to go away to um, uh, to learn the trades. Used to have to go and do Japan because before we could do America. What, what 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 the way we'd do it would be: you do your home base, then after two or three years you'd go to another company, and then you'd go out on the circuit, and then from the in English uh, circuit you'd then do um, Wales, Scotland, Ireland. Then once you'd co combated that, you'd then go to Europe, and then once you'd combated Europe, you'd then go to America and or Japan. Um, it was very hard. There were steps to go. You couldn't just go. Whereas now you've got guys that have been in the job six months. They're already in, in Japan and already um, getting trials for WWE, which in my day would have taken 10, 12 years. Um, the, the passage of time, everyone wants to do it tomorrow. Um, rather than earn your stripes and learn your trade, people want to learn on the go now. And they, um, they're not willing, they're not willing to take criticism. I mean, the guys will come out. Uh, I mean, I remember in my day, you never turned around and said to anyone, "Will you critique me?" You, the only person you took critique from was your trainer or your opponent. You know, the if the opponent was in the business longer than you, they'd take you aside and they'd go, "Right, you can't be doing that shit. Like that shit is wrong." Or you know, your trainer would come up to you afterwards and they, and they would say, um, "I didn't like the way you done this. I didn't." But it wasn't a free for all. It wasn't everyone in the locker room that had been peepholing, uh, telling you where you'd gone wrong and everything. Whereas now, um. You'll be sat there and you're watching the monitor and so okay, do you mind watching my match for me? Can you critique me when I come back? Um, I mean, I'd done that once and the guy got so butthurt because I turned around and said you were too, you, you were, <clears throat> um, everything you'd done that was dodgy was done in front of the referee. So you dropped the referee in the shit. So what's the point in having an official if you're making the official unofficial? Um, so, you know, you've got to hide your work. You've, you know, you, you can show frustration in acting without, you know, doing it in, in, in front of the referee and making it so blatant that the referee really has got no standing in the match. You know, was, was he there to be mugged off and do a free count? The guy got so butthurt about it that he stormed off and, and it was like, you know what? Never doing that again. I'm never going to, if anyone asks me to, um, to critique, I'll go get your mobile phone, take your match, take it home and look at it yourself. If you don't like what you've done, then critique yourself. I don't fucking critique no one. You want to come to my training school, I'll teach you how I do it or how I perceive it should be done, but I'm not going to sit there and rip apart your work or someone else's work for you to get all fucking butt hurt. So um, there is there is a, a lot of frailty with ego in the business. Um, I mean, in in, in my day, um, wrestling was a, um, a the only art, I mean, it was it's very close to ballet um, because we're the only 
um, ballet and wrestling are the only two things in the world that uses every aspect of mind, body and soul. So everything is done um, acting um, with physical, mental, emotional um, and we tell a story. But in any other sport in the world or any other um, thing in the arts that involves um, athleticism, that's why ba ballet and wrestling are very similar. I mean, they say gymnastics, but no, no, it's ballet and wrestling because it needs inner strength and inner poise balance um whereas nothing else really does so when 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 uh people used to kind of uh say to me um right hang on a minute the train of thoughts got so my dog has just scratched my leg and he is just <laughs> beauty he's absolutely honestly he's just absolutely caught me so he, he knocked my train of thought uh what was the question <laughs> what was that last one again oh yeah uh, i was saying about I, I was ballet just... Yeah, yeah, you're talking about ballet and uh, wrestling, you know, using mind, body. Oh, yeah, soul. yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, with those two things are the only two things that, that are strategic enough to use every every um, compromise, every, every aspect. So, when when um, I get I get asked, you know, um, what what is the subtle differences between now and then? Um, I believe that the uh, the art of telling a story, um, you know, that that we use in ballet and wrestling in the old days has gone it's uh they say we're, we're taking more seriously as wrestlers well you're not because you're turning around and telling everyone the job's bent so you want to be taken serious as, as wrestlers but you turn around and allowing the punters to come backstage you're allowing the punters in our world and you're saying kayfabe and you're, you're allowing the punters to speak our language whereas when we were doing it in our day we were classed as fighters even though we went in there and told a story so um you know where we we strove on emotion and um, storytelling in the way what we done then, I think it's very hard for people to tell a story now because it's all about getting your shit in and looking as tough as you possibly can. So, you know, people are doing triple somersaults, going through a flaming table, being wrapped in barbed wire, landing on your fucking head, breaking two fingers, four toes and a fucking kneecap and then jumping up and taking a roll up finish. So it's unbelievable in nowadays compared to what it was in my day. And I think that's a huge difference. Um, and I think that my daughter has kind of um, paved that bridge that was broken uh, because she still had the athleticism um, of, you know, like the cruiserweight style, as we call it now, uh, where it's like the zing, 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 like bump flip, bump flip, bump flip, no sell, bump flip, bump flip. Um, what she did was she would um, she'd do a big boot. She would sell the big boot herself. If she'd done a headbutt, she'd sell her head herself. If um, um, she'd allow, when, when someone hit her, she went down and she sold it, you know, like she'd touch it. If, if she got kicked in the leg, she would show people that the leg is still dead three moves in and someone would try and send her in and she wouldn't go because the leg is dead because two moves before she'd been kicked in the leg. So uh, whereas that's what we would do in our day, um, like she's kind of kind of bridged that gap between them, which is the high flying cruiserweight crazy motherfucker, fucking no sell. I'm better than you. I'm going to get my shit in whether the punters want it or not. And our day, which is let's watch everyone else's matches, see which punters are rising, see which moves they're rising for, and let's nick that and let's do that so we'll get more heat than them. <laughs> and that's the difference between with me, the two styles. The reading right. of stuff is gone. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, I I actually miss uh, an old school uh, test of strength. I, I I don't yeah I miss seeing that in the very beginning. You know, uh, I have uh, written a match. Uh, yeah, I have know, done like a twenty minute match, and you start off with that test of strength, and every single move in that match is a different move, but you never break that hold. Mm, that's even awesome. the finish. Even the finish is in that move. It never breaks. You never mm -hmm. stop. It never breaks. Someone said to me. You can can you write a match about anything? And I went, yeah. And because I I mean I've I've done a whole match with a girl over fifteen minutes draw in a referee's hold where we never broke. And she said mm. to me, "What are we doing?" I said, "We're doing a referee's hold." And what? That's all we're doing. <laughs> well, what can you do in a referee's hold? I went, "What can't you do in a referee's hold?" And she was like, "But I don't get it." I went, "Wait till we're in there." I said, "You'll be upside down and inside out, backwards, forwards, in the ring, out the ring." I said, "We're never going to let go." And we done fifteen minute draw just in a lockup and she come out there and went fuck <laughs> that was insane and you know like we didn't we didn't say anything we didn't do anything it was just that one move and um after i i taught that match because it's one of my training uh, things and um we'd done that match and someone come up to me and they went 
I bet there's there's a move that you can't write a match uh, about that doesn't involve anything else because I've done one on headlocks, I've done one on a leg lock, um, I've done all this stuff where the guy puts the leg lock on at the beginning and the other guy is just trying to get out of it, but the guy doesn't let go of the leg lock. So there's like 80 different moves of the guy trying to get out the leg lock, but he doesn't get out the leg lock. Do you see what I'm saying? All the guy's got to do is just hold onto the fucking leg. So it's the, you know, it's the, you, you get the story of the, the face trying to work out how he's going to get the fuck out the leg lock. How is he going to do it? In the end, he's got to mm -hmm. quit because there's just no way out. It's not because he's weak. It's because he hasn't found the combination. So I'm a firm believer in this sort of, you know, like enthrall the crowd, bring the crowd in, make it logical. So when he, I turn around, I go, like, name, me, name me a move. And they went, butcher's grip. I went, butcher's grip. And they went, no, that. I went, well, that's test of strength. I said, so what are you doing? You're doing butcher's grip or you're doing test of strength like this? And they went, test of strength. I went, okay, tomorrow you'll learn a match that is a, uh, I'll do a 15-minute match that can be elongated to 20 to 25 or it can be done at high speed and do it in eight. I said, but either way, you're going to learn that tomorrow. And I wrote it overnight. So I have, uh, I've got my little Bible in the back, whereas all the stuff I've ever learned is in a book. And then um, all the matches that I've created um, to showcase moves. So if I wanted to teach you a headlock, what better way than to devise a match which is nothing but headlocks? So if the villain would come up, first match, They'd uh, referees all flick into a side headlock and then it's the face getting out of the headlock and the villain putting the headlock back on. So it shows the ingenuity of the face using all these different methods to get out of a headlock. And it shows the villain's ingenuity of how many different headlocks he can put the face in. And all, you know, the face is doing all this running up the rope, jumping crazy shit, going absolutely crazy, using the villain's body as a, as a method to get out of this bloody headlock. And all the villain's got to do is go, well done, pick him up, put him back in headlock. So, there's a there's a comedic side to it. There's a funny side to it. There's an empowering side to it. But there's, to me, to teach a guy a headlock and show them 80 different ways to get in and out of a headlock and put it within a match, to me, is more feasible because they'll write that match down and they'll go, does anyone know a headlock? I know 80. Do you want the ins <laughs> yeah. or the outs? So in, in one afternoon, I can teach someone 80 different styles of headlock that they can put within a match or incorporate or grab as a feed or a takedown. And, um, you know, to me, that's the that to me is the best way to teach. So when I say to people when I'm teaching, I go, um, well, we're going to be uh, I'm going to teach you a headlock. And I'll go. OK, teach <laughs> me a headlock. And then by the end of the training session, they're going, fuck, I didn't realize there was that many. The fuck you blow my mind. And it's like, uh huh, it's just a headlock. That's all. Yeah, it is. that's right. You know, so it's you know, there, there's ways and means. And I, and I think that art is gone. Because people use moves that we use as finishes, as um, as between moves. You know, a single leg Boston to us was a was a finisher. A double leg Boston was a finisher. A DDT was a finisher. And now they kick out on two, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and they manage somehow to get out of a Boston. If I stuck a fucking Boston or a camel clutch on you, you're not getting out of it. Like mm -hmm. no way, you're not fucking getting out of it. You know, it's simple That's as right. job done, match over. It's not happening. Um, That's right. But, but like now they're just getting out of it and it's like wow okay the art is definitely going and a new art is being born that's right yeah because uh yeah what german suplexes when i was a kid they were nasty yeah you get hit with that it was like, oh, yeah, you're almost done yeah german pretty much suplex. Done. yeah you're german landing on your neck done. german yeah. suplex i mean i've seen some really bad german suplexes mm -hmm. eight out of ten match uh, german suplexes i've seen are wrong um there's you've got to be very gifted and you've got to be able to take one it's not about someone just throwing you over the head mm -hmm. It's about the person taking it. There's a there's something that they have to do to make sure they're secure, to make sure that they don't land on their neck and break the fucking neck. But mm -hmm. the guy nowadays, like years ago, we got taught to link in, to buckle down, to push down, and to go with, so that we whatever happened, even if the guy that was throwing us was doing it wrong, we would protect ourselves and we'd land on our shoulders. Whereas now it's just poof, God, hey. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, fuck, you ain't doing that to me. So if you notice in any of my matches in Shimmer, you have not seen me take one German suplex. Not That's right. one. Not That's one. That's right. I won't That's take right. them because I believe, um, I believe, I mean, my grandson, oh, his German suplex is past the blind. And he takes them and he gives them just as well. Um, he protects the person at all costs and they always land on their shoulders, on their back. Their head doesn't even come into contact. Whereas I've, you know, the amount of people I've seen land on necks, and everyone goes, oh, I can do suplexes. No, you fucking can't, mate. Mm. <laughs> no, you can't. Seriously, go mm -mm. back to school and learn. So, yeah, That's in my right. day, a German was a finisher. <clears throat> now it's, oh, yeah, a, yeah. it's a fuck off. 
Yeah, it's a transition. It's a transition. Yes, it is. See, what's that? Is. What's the one? Canadian Destroyer. If somebody would have hit that on somebody when I was a kid, I would have been like, yo, that's the greatest thing ever. Now it's just like, you know, kick ass. Like, oh, come on. Come on, man. There, there, you could, there, was, there was one, right? There, there was a pinfall where um, you kind of locked around the back of the head and then you brought the knees down. So in the nape of the knees and then you'd butchers grip your leg and you'd tilt your arm. And all you'd do is you'd lean on this side of your body. All right. So they were in a real compact circle. Like there was no, they weren't getting out of that because you'd mm -hmm. butchers gripped on. They could push their legs as much as you wanted because the center of gravity is off. There would be no strength on the legs to push out. And that to me means more than throw me over your head and me landing on my neck and not being able to work the next day. That's right. You know, always, always make sure your opponent can work the next day. That's right. So this is the butcher's grip. That's, That's the what butcher's the butcher's grip. God, yeah, see, I used to one. wrestle when I was in school. I used to wrestle. This is a they, they used to call it a cradle lock because you know you cradle someone up, you know, you hold, yeah, because like that. you that's yeah. well, that's the cradle. The move I was just yeah. telling you is a cradle yeah. lock, um, yeah. but that's the name of the lock itself. <laughs> um, this to us is a butcher's grip, okay? Okay, I was yeah, I was uh, when you were saying, I was like, hold on, I thought we used to call that cradle lock because I know this well, that's is the difference between lock. Americans, yeah, yeah, well, that's the difference between Americans and, and the British. I mean, we call things pig's foots and you call yeah. things wrist locks, um, yeah. you know, you you call. Um, a send, a, a, like when you send someone out from the ropes, <laughs> you call that an Irish whip. We we call that a fucking sending. Yeah. I mean, an Irish <laughs> an Irish whip to us is where you grab the arm and you twist the arm backwards to make the head go forward to take a bump. Okay. Um, okay. An Irish whip is not sending someone in. Um, you know, so it's and and we go by the old Greco Roman style. So an Irish mm -hmm. whip in those days was a was a. It's like I think you. I don't know if you call it not a ringer. I I don't know what you call it, but it's. It's nothing like what it's called. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do get confused sometimes when I'm wrestling some of the girls over there, and I and I have to say, this is the move we're doing. Oh, it's this. Well, you know, you call it what you want. Let's call it Bert, so that neither one go. of us gets confused. That's know? right. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I remember the first time, you know, going to wrestling practice and stuff. You know, was, I, I didn't know anything about amateur wrestling. I just know what I seen on TV. I remember first day of practice, I'm going. I'm like, where's the ropes? Where's the ring? You know, what I mean, you just got these pads. Oh, okay. Then it's like, all right. Mate, <laughs> I learned. I learned on mats. I didn't learn in a ring. I learned on mats. And um, I remember, I used to think I was the fucking bollocks when I was younger. <laughs> you know, I was I was about three or four years in, and I was fucking tough. There was hardly any girls about, and I'd been brought in by the guys. And you know, I I hadn't really done a lot of, of rope running because all of my stuff was short arm combat. It was about taking them out, taking them down, getting the fucking pin, and you know, it was all like tough and douche. You didn't do that right, and douche. You didn't do that right. Um. So I remember when I watched a match back and I I think I'd been in the job about three years and I remember coming out of that match and it, and I was fuming because the girl I'd been on with was new. I mean, she was a mate of mine, but I was like, she done this wrong and she done that wrong mm -hmm. and she fucked up the match. And, blah, 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 blah. and then I watched the match back and oh my fucking God, <clears> she was better than I was. Mm. I hit those ropes like a sack of shit. And I, I seriously, because at one stage or another in wrestling, you get your, you, you make if the monster. So you think you're better than what you are. And every single wrestler in the whole world, irrelevant of who they are, where they came for anything, goes through it, where you think you're better than what you are and you think you know it all. And I and I don't give a fuck where you are in the system. Every single wrestler at one stage or another goes through that. And I went through it quite early. And I thought I was the fucking tits. And now I won't watch back my early matches because I'm like, oh, my God, you <laughs> thought you were the fucking bollocks then. You thought <laughs> you were the fucking bee's knees. And, and you look like a pile of fucking shit. You know, so so we've all done it, and we've all we've all we've all done that make up the monster thing. But I'm just unlucky that well, I suppose lucky because there was no internet in my day, so there's not too many <laughs> of my early matches out there. That's right. There is two or there's two or three out there, and I've got a few in the in the archives that ain't coming out. <laughs> they won't be seen in the light of day. It's not fucking That's happening. That's right. That's right. So yeah, if you it's pass, not happening. Don't be... don't go on Vimeo. It's not happening. That's right. So if you pass, they're gonna be uh, buried in an unmarked grave. You know, burned up, buried in an unmarked. I'm grave, burning you know? them bitches. <laughs> they're not fucking coming out. I'm gonna be remembered for the violence, not for fucking That's up. Right. Like, oh man, oh, it was horrendous, <laughs> honestly. And I used to say, oh. I even remember blaming everybody <laughs> but their goat. It was never <laughs> was ever my fault. It was everyone else's fault, and they just didn't know how to wrestle. And I was the fucking bollocks. And blah, blah, blah. but no, no, I was shit. <laughs> that was shit. Oh man! And and uh, but I'm glad that my ego bust uh, a while ago. You know, like in the early days, because like 
everyone has an ego now and not very many people are non-egotistical and you know work for the show it's all about themselves and they don't care about the main event as long as they get their shit in i mean i've seen i've been on shows where the guy in the main event does a certain pinfall and people are kicking out of it in match two and match three knowing full well the guy's going over for the belt in match 10 mm, and that's yeah. the move he's going to be using and it's like like man you know, just because you, you've got a move that links well to that move, you're going to completely bury the guy that's going to be the face of your company and your champion. And you're mm -hmm. going to bury that guy by kicking out of his fucking move, making his mm -hmm. move look weak. Mm -hmm. So not only are you making the dude look weak, you're looking the dude that the move is on look weak because you've just kicked out of that. Not once, mm -hmm. but fucking twice. You know, and it's like, oh, no. Oh, yeah, so, yeah I see know, that too. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like match one, they do that, and then, you know, the finish on there is like, really? You're going to do that? You're going to take the piss out of my move? Oh, that's messed up, man. How are you going to do it, that? Yeah, I've, I've actually been on a tag rope, and um, and I, I, I wasn't happy about this, to be honest. I did deal with it very fucking out of order, to be honest, and I was out of order doing this, but um, I was just so fucking angry, and I couldn't believe that the girl done my move in front of me, and basically was so blasé about it, she didn't give a shit, so I'm not going to mention any names, because I think that's unfair. Um, but I was in the corner and I was there, there were some heavy duty names and it was at Shimmer and I, and I was in the corner and uh, one of the, like my obviously the girl in my corner was in with a girl from their corner and she's shoved her into the corner and she's dropped down and her legs are spread and I'm going like you fucking in is she she ain't gonna cunt punt this bitch is she right in front of me and I'm stood here and the girl is here on the floor and her legs are open I see this girl go over to the other corner anyway and I'm going I'm gonna fucking do it just going to do my move in front of me while I'm on the fucking tagline. Are you kidding me? And she did. She literally cunt punted my opponent, uh, one of my team members, right? And I've just looked down and I've looked up and I, and no, I better because everyone will know which match it is. So I've turned around to this very prominent female that was there and I've turned around and she looked at me and she went, oh shit. I went, yeah. And I've got <laughs> crack and I've tagged myself in. Right? And I've grabbed this bird and I have aimed her all over the fucking place by her mm. air. And and then I've got I've grabbed her an headlock and went, Don't ever do my fucking move in front of me again. Don't <laughs> ever fucking do that. And it was out of order because it was an ego it was egotistical. But I was so pissed that this girl and I wasn't quite sure about her because she had it I mean, it, it was just a personality clash because the girl was like it with everybody, but you kind of learn after a while of being with these girls that sometimes it's just a personality trait and they're not cunts it's just how they are <laughs> um you know and stop being so butthurt about everything um but that really fucking offended me like so bad that this girl and she was knee eye to a grasshopper had run over and cunt punted this flipping bird in front of me so it's like right okay game on oh man fucking game on <laughs> oh man I wouldn't do that with you because I, yeah, I don't want any shots from you or anything. I've seen you in the ring. I want no, I want to be on your side. I don't want to be on the opposite side. To be side honest, of that. <laughs> I, I say to the girls, like, there's certain moves I do, like with the hair pulls and the drags and everything. And the girls are actually locked onto me. They're, they've, we've got, an, there's an interlock that's inside the hair. Um, and it's actually, um, I call it sporting illusion. I'm just um, I'm just aggressive in my stance, in my production of, of my gimmick. I am a very aggressive person. And um, I you've got to remember, I've traveled the world alone. So I've got to have an aura about me where people have to think twice before they want to fuck with me. You know, it's like you really want to take mm -hmm. me on. I'll glass you, bitch. Mm -hmm. And I need people to be completely aware of that so that people leave me alone. Mm -hmm. So. You know, if I go out and I'm doing a match and people turn around and there's meet and greet and go, fucking hell, Saturday night's over there. Yo, yeah. don't, don't fuck with her. It's like, oh, okay, it's a quiet night. It's a nice quiet night for me. You know, I've been to many Paysans. I'll tell you one time, though, um, I was at Paysans and we, I was getting a lot of death threats. Um, my daughter was getting a load of death threats and I had 90 in one day. Um, mm. So the police were involved and these were getting, these death threats were getting quite explicit. Um I mean, it, to be fair, I've actually got them all. I'm, I was going to put them on Facebook on the anniversary of when they come out. I have got them all. Um, so I remember I was with Mercedes Martinez and um, uh, Melissa Anderson. And they were sat in a cubicle and I am lent on the table and I'm talking to the girls. You know, I mean, it's just old school banter. I mean, it was just, just a bit of a laugh. And um, 
I've, I've clocked the time and I've just said to one of the guys that was going back to the hotel, is there any chance you can take me back because my husband's going to bed soon and I, I want to catch him before he goes to bed just so he knows that I'm okay. So I went back to my hotel room. Now, my phone didn't work because in, in those days, I just had a, um, a pay-as-you-go. I didn't have my contract phone um, because I didn't want to lose a contract phone aboard, so I would take a pay-as-you-go. Well, it's really fucking expensive to, to do it that way. So um, I've gone back home. I've gone back to the hotel and I've plugged my phone in, and uh, I've opened up a um, my Facebook, and I, I'm I'm searching for my husband so I can do a video call for him. And um, there was a, in, it, it came up as like other Facebook user, and somebody had sent a photograph of me bending over uh, Melissa and and Mercedes talking, and and the tagline was I could have got you tonight, you bitch. I was ready to slit your fucking throat mm. and I decided against it till the next time. So the guy that was going to, that had been sending me a lot of death threats and all this sort of stuff was actually in Paysans, actually was so close to me that he could take a photograph of me and actually told me that the following day he was going to slit my throat in Paysans. And just to prove he could do it, he sent a photograph of me talking to the girls. And I went home to that. I went back to the hotel with that. Mm. And that's when I decided that's like, fuck the shit, fuck the shit. I'm no longer doing the uh, meet and greets. I'm not going to talk to anyone at the meet and greets. I now don't trust anybody. I'm not going to mix with any of the punters. I'm not going to do anything. And I even said to Dave, I can't do it, Dave, because I can't guarantee my safety. And I tell you something, if someone comes up at me and a knife, I am going to, I am going to turn the bar upside down. I am going to glass them. You, 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 you don't realize how dangerous a situation this is, that if I think at any one minute that I am in danger, I will flip and turn around and come out fighting. You know, and it's and me in America or wherever I am, it's it's a dangerous situation to be in. You know that you're always watching your back, and I just felt so unsafe in the end. And and I knew that the that the protection I needed wasn't going to be there. I couldn't guarantee. I mean, if if I kicked off, I mean, I'm not being funny. Mercedes and and would would back my corner. I mean, she's one of my best friends. I mean, I know she would back my corner, but. If it happens in a split second and I see out the corner of my eye, because I would never turn my back then, and I see someone coming towards me and I think that they're dodgy, I will fly at them and glass them. So mm. the situation is too rocky and too dangerous for me to be in that situation because my personal safety was was always at risk. You know, and everyone used to go, Don't go near Sarai she's a miserable <laughs> bitch. Don't go near her because you know she doesn't do autographs, she doesn't do this, she doesn't do that. But they don't realize that I was getting between 40 and 80. I mean, 90 was the worst. Death threats a day. Mm. You know, so it, it made me very reclusive on the circuit and made me not want to move. So you'd find me in a corner and you'd find me. And what I would do is I'd be slap bang. There'd be people I know there and people I'd, I know here. And so either side of me and I would be in the middle and I'd have a little track. So it'd be hello to the bar or whatever. And th that line is the only line that I'll be anywhere in, in where I am. That is the line that I'll fall. So everybody knows where I am because I never move from there because I can see everything. I can see every door. I can see every opening and I don't, I don't mix, but it's not because I'm an arsehole. It's because I can't because I, I'm, I've got to think about my safety and the safety of the people around me. So it's, you know, it was a very hard situation at one stage with these, um, these death threats and, I mean, I was meant to have been shot at um, MCO four times. I was meant mm. to have been shot in Dallas. Um, I was, uh, someone was going to be at the stadium in Dallas and um, they were waiting to shoot me. Um, you know, there was, there was one time when I had to, um, I went and done a meet and greet with Raya and um, the reason that I got bought in was an extra pair of eyes because someone had turned around and said that they were there to bomb Soraya. So, um mm. Um, I actually, I got bought in and I, I think it was the night actually I took a picture with Kathy, but I wasn't bought in to do that table with Raya. I was bought in to watch the line because there's no better eyes than your mother's. So while Soraya was working, um, I was actually watching every single member of that line. I was, I was there. So I was there with security to make sure that my daughter was safe. And then once it became to because Raya's line was the was the biggest. Once they came to a reasonable standard, that the security that was there, because there was police and undercover and um, security that was all around Raya's desk because of the death threat that she'd had. Um, that uh, it, like they like everyone else. There were all all the people that was around for everyone else. There wasn't. I mean, we had um, armored cars. We had police escort. We had everything that day. But nobody <laughs> understands what happened that day. 
Um, and that was uh, Kathy has that picture on her Twitter as her as her header. But the, the thing is, is, is that day was the day that my daughter got um, a death threat to say she was going to be bombed. So, mm. um, you know, there's there's lots that goes on in the background that people don't know about. And they just automatically assume that you are as you are because you're just a cunt. And it's actually not. You are what you are through circumstance and through other people's choices. So sometimes you've got to step back and see a bigger picture because it's not always black and white. It really isn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree yeah, with you. If, uh, yeah, if I, uh, yeah, if I got death threats like that, yeah, I'd be like the same thing too. Same thing too. You know, not, not to cut in on, that. not to cut in on Rob's, you know, time, but I fans a, a lot of these days need to learn to be a bit more empathetic in terms of you know professional wrestlers, and they need to understand they're also people too. Like I remember one, and I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I remember one time I was actually in, um, I was actually in New York. Um, and I, I got I got invited to a it was Shine. I don't know if you ever worked for Shine, but it was Shine. I think fifty nine or fi one of the fifties, but it was in uh, Queens, New York. And um, my friend La Rosa Negra. I don't know if you ever wrestled her or heard of her. Yeah, but I've wrestled. Yeah, she invited me. Yeah, she, I've wrestled. Yeah. Yeah, she invited me to that show, so I came there. You know, met up with her, and I saw Tommaso Ciampa and I saw Tyler Breeze. They were sitting not too far from my seat. Like I was like a few feet away from them. So I went over there. I said, hey, Tommaso, Tyler, I'm not here to be a Craze fan, but I just want to say you gentlemen are doing great work. Keep up the good work. I gave Tommaso Ciampa a handshake, and I left. That was it. You know, yeah. a lot of these fans. Yeah, but that's respectful. Really, that's, that's, that's respectful. That's that's fine. You know, that's I've fine, got, I, you know, I, I've got, I would respect I, that. I, I would respect that. Like, you know, I don't, if like, I see these wrestlers in a gym somewhere, like, I'm not going to yeah. like, oh, can I get an autograph? Yeah, cool. No, because that's their time to work out. I'm, I'm the kind of person, I work out a lot too. So if somebody interrupts me for something, and it's not like life, limb, or eyesight, or death, something that's happening to them, I'm going to have an attitude about it. So that's yeah. why you see, when I see people outside of these meet and greets, I leave them alone. Yeah, <laughs> I just, yeah, I find that I, hard. They see like, me and I see them, I, I give them. I find that hard. Like, I've, I've, been, I've been eating with Raya. I've, I've been, no, I've been no, you eating with Raya. I've been sat and eating with no, Raya. No, and and I've been sat eating with Raya. And like, we've literally been waiting and right, Raya will stop anything she's doing. And um, it's like, yeah, no, it's okay. And then go and do the thing and then sit down. Then her dinner will be there. And then a fan will go, could you just? Her dinner's there and it's warm. And she goes, yeah, 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 no problem. And I'm starting to boil up because I'm thinking, she's just ordered that food. The girl has to eat. She is in the public eye 24-7. She's, you know, she, is, she belongs to the world. I get that. But seriously, surely the girl can eat. She can just have a fucking meal. You can just give her, give her 20 minutes just to eat her food. You know, wait until she's finished and then go up. But just let the girl eat. And then, um, you know, there was another time we, you know, we both went to the bathroom together. We were doing, we'd done a a, a black path show, and we we went to the bathroom. And um, this girl would not leave me alone. She just would not. I mean, she she really wanted me. And I mean, I'm not talking fighting wise. She really fucking wanted me, and she wouldn't take no for an answer. So I, Ray has gone to the bathroom with me because I'm starting to get angry because this bird wouldn't leave me the fuck alone. And, you know, the, the way I looked at it is well, there's only one way I'm going to be able to tell this girl that I'm not interested in her advances. So Ray has kind of whisked me off and we've gone to the bathroom. And um, she's gone, hang on a minute, Mum, I'm just going to go for a wee. So I'm just stood out and I'm leant against the, table, uh, the, the sinks and she's having a wee. And uh, as she's come out, she hasn't even had a chance to wash her hands. This girl's come rushing in, not the one that was after me, but this girl's come rushing in. Oh, my God, Paige, can I have an autograph? And she's gone, can you just give me a minute? I've just been to the bathroom. I just need to wash my hands. Oh, right, fucking attitude, huh? And you're like, the girl's just pissed and wiped her minge, and all she wants to do is wash her fucking hands so that she can be respectful and then and, and shake your hand. But if you want to shake her hand while she's got, you know, she's just been to the bathroom for fuck's sake. But... You know, people think that that's not right. They think that, that automatically you see a famous person, you, that you belong to them. They can't go to the bathroom. They can't eat their food. They can't do anything. They can't go around Walmart. They can't do anything because they're famous and they owe it to you because without your fandom, 
they're not famous. Well, we all get that, okay? Without fans, we're not famous. That's great. We get it. We get it. But we're also human beings too, and we shit and we piss and we eat and we and we party just like anybody else. And surely mm. at one stage or another, there's got to be a very a time off slot. Even if it's very slight, it has to be a time off slot. Um, mm -hmm. But Raya is amazing. She she stops with the amount of times I've sat with her and I'll go, Raya, she went, Mum, butt out. Nothing mm -hmm. to do with you. These guys, without these guys, I'm nothing. So if these guys want an autograph, I'm going to give it to them. And I'll be like, Raya, your food will fuck my food, Mum. Fuck my food. These guys are more important. And she just loves her fans so much that, you know, because they've been there for her when, when you know, like the chips are down. Her her hardcore fans are the ones that keep her alive and keep her keep her going. That if one of the fans come up, she'll give them whatever time that they need. And, I mean, I don't know. That's, I love the girl for that. I do love it. But I do believe at one stage or another, she should be allowed to have a fucking meal in peace. Just one. That's right. Just That's one. right. Even, even a sandwich in the car. That's even right. a, just something, you know. A corn dog, pretzel, something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, dog. pack of the crisps, pack of the crisps, that you know, on the, on the toilet. You there know? you go. There you Kill go. Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Now I do uh, now before I pass it on back to Remy, I seen we going we going here like over three hours and stuff. My battery's going low and all that, you know. Mate, I mate, I, I've I've had to turn <laughs> a roast dinner off. It's now half past eight here, and we haven't Ooh. eaten our tea, so That's I've right. given you three three good That's hours. Right. So. I know, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely, yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, need to eat and all that, and I'm so I'm glad that you came on and all, yeah. But before I go, I'm mate, we've had a good time. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I want to say, you know, I want to say thank you You're so, so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule, coming on, chatting with us. That Kathy, thank you for getting her on here. You know, getting Ma Dukes on here, Mom and Knight. Oh, it was a blast. I had such a great time, and hopefully, sometime in the future, we get to do it again or something. And if uh, COVID's anytime up, you want to, just yep, drop me a line. It's very easy to talk to. Yep, if COVID's up and uh, you come back over here doing shows or whatever, you know, well, hopefully, I can get to see you there too. Absolutely. No, it's, it's been fun. It has been fun. I mean, you're very easy to talk to. I mean, shit, I thought that was, this was going to be about an hour and it's now three hours and 10 minutes and <laughs> I'm still right. sat here in, in my back room freezing my flipping tits off. So, you, <laughs> you know, so, so it's, it, it has been good fun. So fair play to you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, no and, worries, and I, I hope all the positive things happen to you, your family and all that good stuff. I wish nothing but the best for everyone. Ah, oh, love it. Love it. Love the positivity. <laughs> Thank all right. you. Yeah, no problem. Remy, it's all you, man. Yeah, no problem. Remy, it's all you, man. So, right, I got to say, you know, thank you very much for actually being on our show. Um, I've never been so nervous talking to somebody before until I actually met you. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, Kathy, you did it again. But, yeah, um, I, I just got to say thanks a lot. Um, and you know, I, hopefully, I could definitely catch a show, one of your shows somewhere down the line. Maybe if I'm in England, because I do have relatives in London. So fantastic. Who knows? Well, it's you're fantastic. only two hours maybe, away from me then. Hours away from me then. Yeah, maybe one day I'll actually get over there because London is on my goal. And one of the first things I'm done doing after I hit a uh, Trafalgar Square and have me a nice big bottle of quality streets because I grew up on I grew up on English streets. I'm from Guyana. Which is which is known as British Guiana. Yeah. So yeah. I grew up on a lot of the English like chocolates, like Cadbury. I love Cadbury. Oh, I like Cadbury oh, more than Hershey. I'm probably gonna get my ass kicked yeah. before saying that from my fellow Americans, but uh, I love Cadbury more than Hershey. So, English chocolate um, is the best. Yeah, hopefully. English chocolate is the best. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully one day after um, once I'm done doing that, I could I, I could try to catch catch a Belichick show. Or um, any other show over there, because I've always thought that you know the English, um, the English wrestling scene is amazing, and you know I really want. It. I'm I'm pretty sure it's something to check out live as well too. And um, oh, it is. It's pretty cool. I, well, say, I, I just pretty cool. I appreciate I, I, you guys I, taking time with me because it's, it's been. I mean, three hours. I mean, three, three and a quarter hours, hours down the line, and we've been, been, been non-stop chatting. Been non-stop so chatting. So it's actually yeah. quite nice. They have a quite nice. They have a podcast where um everything is just so relaxed that you feel like you're just like part of a crew rather than a guest. A guest. Yeah, and just for the record, so I I know I noticed you have another member of the Knight family, a one Nikki Knight. That's over here yes, in America. Yes, that's my eldest yes, daughter. My eldest daughter. Oh, not, uh, not over there. Uh, we have, I haven't got a Nicky there. Nick in, we have, I haven't got a Nicky. In... There's not a Nicky Knight in America. <laughs> not a Nicky Knight in America. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw you team with a Nikki Knight before, so... Um... Yeah, that's my daughter over yeah, here. That's my so daughter over that, here. I, I, so I tagged with her I, over I, here. I tagged with her over here. Oh. And she's Happy. violent as fuck, mate. Right. She, she is violent as fuck. <laughs> she's a baller. She's a baller. Yeah, I was going to say we try to get her on the show one of these days. I thought she was over here, like in America. No, but, uh... no, she's, she's, no, no, she lives she's, just she's, outside she's, Norwich. She's just outside oh, Norwich. Oh, oh. Oh. Lucy had to come say hi. Lucy yeah. had to come say Never hi. Fail. Never fail. Never fail. Never fail. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've got, I've say, got I've um, a lot of children and stuff, so I can get my husband maybe next time. So I can get my husband maybe next time. So I've got any member of the Knight family so would absolutely. absolutely. Kathy, Kathy, would just let us know who you Kathy, want, and we'll know who you absolutely want, do it. Absolutely do it. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. But sorry, I just have to say, if nobody has told you before. You know, thank you for all the years that you put into uh, professional wrestling, and thank you for all the people that you have trained to become the next generation of superstars. If you have, if, if you've heard it already, when you're hearing it for, for the millionth time from us at Ringside Society, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't, I can't, ex I can't express how much you know gratitude we have for what you've done for the world of professional wrestling. So, with that well, being said, well, it, it would actually be remiss of me. Just one final question, just to ask, what would you, a young girl coming into the business, what advice would you give them if they want to have as young, as, as long a career as you um, have? Um, God, a long God, career. A long career. Okay, okay. Don't do silly Don't bumps. Don't do silly bumps. For heat. For heat. Only do bumps Only for do meaning. Bumps that for mean meaning. Something. That means something. Usually, Usually one bump per, one match, bump is per match is enough. Um, if you um, want to go into training, want to go into training, make sure the school, is, sure reputable. The school is reputable. Make sure they have sure all of their certifications. Um, make um, sure that the people sure that are in the, they're teaching, in, you they're teaching you have been on the circuit, on the circuit and, are well known, and are well known so that you can, so ask, that you people, can ask people um, about, um, this, about these, trainers these trainers and they can give and you they positive, can give positive or negative or feedback. feedback. Um, if the people on the circuit haven't heard of your trainer, then your trainer is worth, worth their salt. Worth their salt. So, uh, so my advice my to advice any girl coming in, in the business: be safe, be safe, be savvy, be savvy. And uh, and uh, it, my door is always my door open, is always if, open if, you're if, if you're worried about, worried about uh, companies uh, and people. And people. Irrelevant, 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 irrelevant of what people, people think about me on the internet. I've got girls. I've got girls. Um, their, their livelihoods um, in livelihood. Like that, that's first and foremost. Like that, that's first Just the same as all of my Just family. Just the same as all of my family. So if anybody wants to start wrestling uh, from anywhere in the world, I absolutely got no problem whatsoever um, directing them to reputable schools. Um, there is many out there. There's more reputable schools than 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 bad ones. Believe me. Um, but yeah, save your bodies, girls. You don't have to go out there and bump like a bitch. You don't have to do hardcore. And um, there's nothing more beautiful to watch than two women knowing how to um, how to wrestle and doing the wrestling match rather than this running jumping. You can't compete with the boys, so don't try to go out there and and find your own edge and um, enjoy it. Just enjoy it, enjoy every moment. But my door is always open to anybody that wants to, uh, that wants to wants find to a school. Find... Awesome. So, y'all ladies out, y'all young ladies out there, y'all just got some advice from a thirty-plus year vet here, in um, Mr. Ryan Knight. Uh, a lot of times you gotta pay for stuff like this, but you got a little something, something from her. So just you know, take it and uh, go forward with it. And like I said. Uh, hope, and, and, and hopefully uh, everything will work out for you with the advice she gave you. Or you can actually go to her school and, uh, you know, get that real training, you know, that rough and, uh, rough and tough training. But, believe um, me, if you come to my school, please don't school, think please it's going to be easy, easy because, I, because I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a bully. I train hard. Uh, it's because uh, I care. It's because I care. Um, um, so, you know, so, you know uh, I was talking uh, with my mate Jazz and she said to me, me. It's a rule that she lives by. If your trainers, if your trainers stop training, stop training, training you hard, hard, worry about it because it means they no longer care. Awesome. That's great advice. So, so it, is great, so it is great advice. Before I let you go, um, where can fans find you on social media if they want to you know, purchase, purchase uh, merchandise, if they want to become wrestlers and join your school, or if they just want to find out when your next appearance is? Um, where are you at on social media? 
Okay, well, okay, well um, you can find, um, us, first you can find us first and foremost on Twitch, Twitch which is, uh, is my uh, husband's, my husband's Real Vicky Knight, Knight on Twitch. On, Twitch. Um, on, um, on, on Twitter, Twitter, it's Real Soraya K. K. Um, Instagram, um, Instagram, it's Soraya Knight, Soraya Knight 1910. 1910. You won't find you me, won't on, find me on, on Facebook, Facebook unless I find unless you, I find because, you um, because um, it's only people it's only that I want that I have on there. But you can email me for any information, sweetsoraya at hotmail.com. Um, or my husband's company at waw1994 at hotmail.co.uk. Um, any information that you need, we are absolutely there. We are 24-7. If There's always one of us online. So if anybody has got any questions whatsoever, um, just let us know. We'll, we'll do whatever we can to help you. And if the worst comes to the worst, you can always come over and stay and have a roast dinner. Awesome. So I got to say once again, Thank you very much, and thank you, to, thank you to your daughter as well. I know she's probably, I know she's ever going to watch this, but if she does, Paige, if you're listening, thank you for all you've done as well, too. You know, the Knight family, y'all are awesome. And like I said, I look forward to seeing more, more and more great things from y'all as well, too. Um, thank you, baby. It's been, an absolute, it's been pleasure, an absolute pleasure, darling. Pleasure, darling. <laughs> no problem. Um, Kathy, before, um, so with that being said, um, it's about time for us to close the show. It's time for us to bid y'all adieu. Those of y'all that are actually uh, listening and watching us, uh, my Betty's giving me that uh, discerning grumble, and my eyelids are getting a bit heavy, so that means it's time for a snack and a bit of a power nap. But uh, before I get into that, uh, Kathy, where on social media are you in, uh, so that um, you know, fans can actually you know, talk to you about wrestling, you know, all that good stuff? Where are you at on social media, Kathy? So I'm on so Twitter, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch and Discord. And Discord all I'd, all I'd, all I'd, said, five and seven. Seven. Hey, Rob made it. Hey, Rob made it. <laughs> his phone was busted. Phone was probably. busted probably. Yeah, yeah, my phone died. Yeah, my phone yeah, died. Phone died. <laughs> it's, it happens. <laughs> Rob, where you got on social media? Um, if fans want to, you know, talk to you about wrestling, be on the show, purchase merchandise, which we have available. Um, check out your work as a, as, a, as a security guard at DCW. We are on social media, bro. Uh, you can find me on uh, you can find me Twitter and Instagram, Twitter and Rob Instagram Rob Rob Base, Base 82. Base 82. Uh, Facebook, Rob Base, you know, uh, everything else, YouTube, all that Rob Base. And if you want to find me on social media, not that I have anything interesting to say, but who knows, you might get lucky. Um, you can find me on Twitter at the Remy Blue. You can also find our podcast on Twitter at Ringside Society. Our podcast is also on Instagram at Ringside Society. And as a matter of fact, we do have a couple of uh, interesting lookalikes in honor of National Lookalike uh, Day, which was this past Tuesday. So check it out. Uh, you might so find some of it very interesting. Um, we're also on Facebook. Yes, we have a Facebook group. Facebook groups are cool now. Not that they never were, but definitely check out our Facebook group. Uh, we have a lot of cool things there too as well and we also have a teespring store with a lot of cool merchandise as well a lot of cool t-shirts designs and whatnot check it out support us every single cent we get from those sales goes back into keeping this show afloat but um with that being said we just want to thank everybody t today that actually tuned in live to listen to us we really and truly appreciate it to those of you that are going to listen to us later on via our youtube channel um, thank you in advance. And to those of you that hate us, can't stand us, really and truly wish, and I'm going to steal a bit of, I'm not going to, I don't want to appropriate, appropriate English culture, but uh, to those of you that actually wish, we would just shut down shop, go away, and oh, just piss off. <laughs> well, uh, we're sorry you feel that way, but uh, we're not going what anywhere happened? for a while. They hate us because they, they hate us. us, they hate us. And we ain't stopping. So with that being said, we just want everybody here, we just want everybody to know that we here at Ringside Society are very well aware that everybody and their grandparents, wait, how does it go again? Oh, we, we know that everybody and their grandparents and their parents have a podcast. Well, we're not your grandparents' podcast. We're not your parents' podcast. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we're, not just, we're not just any podcast. Rob, Kathy, one time for the mind, one time for the people, one time for the, the wrestling culture, and one time for the illustrious and very, very talented Knight family. What type of podcast are we? All right. Three, three, two, one.
We're the Wrestling Fans Podcast. We're the Wrestling Fans Podcast. That's right. We're the Wrestling Fans Podcast. And we'll be back <laughs> with y'all again next Thursday with another impressive episode. But until then, during this pandemic, y'all, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, be excellent to each other, and party on, dudes. We out. Peace. See y'all. Good night. See y'all. Good night. Stay classy, Delaware. Stay classy, Delaware. Bye. Bye. Cheerio. Cheerio. Ha, ha, ha.